my voice it's it's not it's not good uh, i will try my best uh, let me take this opportunity to greet uh, us all uh, it has been a, a long time not uh, sitting with this wonderful committee but first and foremost i wanted to thank you honorable members of this committee uh, with the department that were, we were always uh, not forgotten to tell our department that uh, women's sport is still a, a, a sport in, in South Africa. Uh, I'm taking this opportunity of saying that here we are today. We, I do believe we have some few members which we lost uh, during the recess. Uh, we did uh, as individuals send condolences in su to some of these members' family. But uh, the good news is that as Honorable CBC is now uh, trying to remind uh, us that uh, Saturday, uh, They've put a mark and they've done a wonderful thing for, for the Zulu nation and the uh, South African nation to have to put a silo uh, window. We are so Siabo uh, Gagakul also as this committee and members of East South Africa who are sport-loving people, they, we did have seen each and every member congratulated the Banyana Banyana when they were facing a, 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 the Barro Barro Koro for netball, you know, soccer a match. It was a very tough one, but the girls have done and were so proud about themselves, let alone that that's last weekend. Also, a history has been uh, written again about the Springbok women when they've beaten the Spain. Uh, in that a uh, huge score so now again south africa is shown that uh, sometimes even uh, in sport when you strike a woman you strike a rock the way that they are playing these girls and the only thing now which uh, as this committee has been preaching is that a business sector, government, and each and every uh, person who can assist. Let's try uh, to preach that these girls, they must get views like uh, their counterparts. But I'm suspecting in other areas, they've started to acknowledge. Uh, let's thank also the department when Banyana Banyana came back about uh, the check that they received through uh, our department, but it's the work that the committee has been doing when it's doing oversight uh, to make a hell of noise about the sport development for women in South Africa. <clears throat> uh, I'm not forgetting that uh, other sporting codes, they are playing, they are winning, 
your cricket uh, and every sport in South Africa. Now this season, it's it's open. The COVID, uh, it's in the uh, lowest of it. Let alone that now, the change of season. Everybody is getting flu, but we must take care. In those words, uh, I'm saying we are welcome. It was a long recess, but fortunately with us all here, we have leaders who are sitting in programming, uh, which they agreed upon that we must have such a long um, recess because they wanted that we must go and do our role mm -hmm. in from our communities I greet all who's in this platform, starting from the honorable members, the department and the staff, which is here with us. Uh, honorable members, let me put a, a, the, yeah, this is the agenda in front of us. Uh, do we have any apologies? <laughs> uh, good morning, Chair. Good morning, members. Uh, good morning to the department. Yes, Chair, we do have apologies. We have an apology from Mamu Kawula. She will not be joining us today uh, due to network problems. Uh, we also have an apology from uh, Mamu Sibia, who is attending um, the Science and Innovation a workshop and uh, we also have an apology from the minister he's indicated that he'll be joining the meeting a bit late due to the cabinet uh, meeting that uh, commenced at 8 30 and we also have an apology from the deputy minister who's also in the same meeting but will not be joining the, the, the committee meeting as she will be uh, 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 in an appointment that she has at the embassy for a visa application chair those are the apologies that i've chaired uh, thank you very much Yes, honorable, yes, honorable Veronica. Um, I also just want to say that I will be not be attending the whole meeting. Um, I also have an obligation starting from quarter to two, so I might be leaving at one o'clock. Thank you, honorable members. Honorable members, here are the apologies. Uh, I'm suspecting don't have any problem with the apologies. Uh, I'm putting this agenda in front of you, honorable members. Can someone adopt the agenda? <laughs> yes, uh, honorable. Sorry, Chair, I move for the adopt adoption of the agenda. Thanks. Any second, honorable members? I second the adoption of the agenda. Thank you, Honorable CBC. Uh, honorable yeah. member, let's go to the briefing. Oh, I'm seeing the hand of yeah. Honorable Mshongo. Honorable Mshongo. Sure I'm thirdening. <laughs> I was seconding the agenda. It's fine. Oh. Oh, sorry, sorry. I've seen it later. Thank you, Honorable Mshong. Uh, can I accept now that the DG of the department uh, must take us through and tell us who's going to give us the presentation of the first uh, item agreement of South Africa and Cuba. Uh, yeah, good morning, uh, honorable <laughs> chairperson. Good morning. And uh, good morning to the honorable members. There's something is noisy. Try to sort the area. Something is uh, mm. giving us an echo. Uh, sorry about that, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, my name is Vizum Kese, the DG to Hunt Sports and Culture. In uh, our meet, I came with my team 
the team of the department, uh, which is constituted of DGs. Uh, DDG Kumalo is here, responsible for ACPB. And then DDG um, Tsumaya Khan, responsible for recreation and development and sport promotion program too. And then we've got uh, DDG uh, Chikotamba, responsible for corporate services. Uh, I then have a DTG Dima responsible for heritage uh, promotion and preservation. And then uh, we've got the chief of staff, Mr. JP Law. We've got then Mr. Manasseh, who is the acting chief director for monitoring and evaluation. Currently, because uh, Dr. Chiso is uh, on sick leave. And then we've got uh, Mr. Toby Chamzache, the advisor to the minister. Of course, the CFO, Mr. Israel Mokwane. And then we also have um, Mr. Ma um, Mr. Watani from the Office of the Deputy Minister. Um, and then uh, I've got uh, Lodwick, who is responsible for sharing the documents as she, as I will be taking honorable members through, as well as uh, Ms. Bongera Manete, the director in my office. Uh, then from international relations, I've got Ms. Cleon Noah, uh, who will be supporting us as we present the issue of the bilaterals uh, that we have with our countries, Cuba, as well as Brazil. That is the delegation of the department, uh, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members. Allow me then, Honorable Chairperson, that uh, I apologize in advance uh, in case I request uh, one of the TTGs, possibly uh, Mr. Ndema spoken to, that if my voice does fail me uh, due to the exacerbation of flu, uh, uh, then he will take over. Uh, Honorable Chairperson, we have a very uh, two agreements that I believe were also shared with the committee so that uh, the members do not just have a presentation, but also have the view of the agreements themselves. Now, these agreements are part of the South Africa's effort to have diplomatic ties with like-minded countries where we are able to have either strengthening of people-to-people -people relations, or whether it's economic, political, or whatever, even at a multilateral level. Now, Cuba is one of the countries that uh, we have a cultural exchange and cooperation agreement. I would not go into detail because I believe everybody in the house understands that there are fundamental ties that South Africa has with Cuba which are historical from the resistance and fight against oppressive system called apartheid. And they were then, uh, they contributed immensely in that fight. And in fact, if you go to Freedom Park, one of our museums, you will see the reflection that they did not only contribute in material terms, but also at some point through the, pri the highest price of life in fight alongside liberation for not just South Africa, for Africa's liberation. Hence then, we've got very deep ties with Cuba. When you then signed this agreement, the agreement was signed on the June the 10th of 2021, in the place of signature South Africa, and then all agreements of this level of nature only come into force, even if we have been signed, they do have to come into force once ratified by government uh, uh, by parliament of that country. So the validity period of this particular agreement um, is for five years, uh, which can then be either automatically renewed and or can then be terminated in line with provisions of subtitle article three. That means giving a notice of four to six months before the termination. Then the date of termination, as parties agree, will then be within the notice period of six months. And this it can only be done through the normal diplomatic channel. 
So that's something that South Africa's Department of Sport Arts and Culture wakes up and say, hey, we are now cutting this relationship. They will have to follow the diplomatic channels for us to be able to get to that point. Honorable Chairperson, as I've indicated earlier, South Africa and Cuba have had long-standing relations which dates back to our struggle for freedom and democracy. And in then it was a, the defeat of which then, if we know that apartheid and Cuba played a critical role uh, when we speak about the the Quito Canava um, battle, uh, where things really led to a turning point in terms of the resistance uh, against apartheid. Uh, and in that process, the commanders of Cuba were part of that. Now, then, since then, the 15th of May, 1994, there was then a diplomatic relations that were established, and that was on the 15th of May. And, and then the embassies were opened both in both countries, Havana as well as Pretoria. So Cuba's commitment to South Africa in the areas of health, social development, infrastructure is self-evident. As we know, the most famous one of the training of medical doctors uh, through Cuba, who export human capital as one of their powerful contribution to a betterment of the world. Therefore, South Africa took advantage of that also with their doctors um, a doctoral training at, for medicine. So more than 2,800 of South African students are receiving medicine training there in Cuba, and further 420 graduated already. It is therefore then in this regard that also, when we face the situations in this country where people are uh, doctors, we know that there is this thing of wanting to work in urban conditions. But uh, with the need in rural areas and communities, and uh, also with the challenges of COVID, Cuba and doctors have also been neutralized. But we also, in our own sphere, in terms of training of uh, sport uh, people, we do send students there. Uh, we've got an example in the department of a young man who was trained there uh, and is doing quite well as an employee of the department. Now, if we move then to the issue of promotion of communication between uh, respective specialists and officials so that we increase awareness about cultural life of each country and improve people-to-people -people relations, we have the organization of uh, cultural workshops, music festivals, as well as other artistic events in both countries. But we also intend to use this agreement to foster the exchange of music bands and information on the music development in both countries. As we know that Cuba's culture is quite very strong. So if we look at that, then we also agreed that uh, there will be cooperation among the authors or the writers and in the, uh, in the field of literary uh, work. Uh, and then have lectures uh, that can then be shared um, in between the respective peoples of these two countries. This in the field of literature, uh, uh, which is quite critical as we try to increase the capacity of authorship in the country, but also in terms of the culture of reading and most importantly, exposure to knowledge through books. So the issue of then also parties will thrive to organize uh, cinema festivals and the exchange information on cinematography productions uh, of both countries. This area in terms of um, audiovisual is quite critical, as we know that uh, the area of film and animation is one of the new areas that we need to explore as a country in order to raise the standard of our cultural creative industry. Now for purposes of proper coordination also, the party organizing a visit of a delegation will inform each party at least within 30 days in advance uh, about such interests and specific details of the said visit. This is aimed at making sure that visits are not uh, made uh, only for the sake of them, but that uh, they are of 
benefit to each country as they happen. And therefore, proper planning becomes crucial and the MOU had to assist uh, in order to clarify these areas. And there should be no confusion then on how we can effect or put into action our programs based on the MOA. If we then look at the next slide, uh, Chairperson, the current status is that um, uh, since the signing of the first agreement, the countries have had real reciprocal cultural exchanges, um, which have uh, taken the form of either ballet or book fair, the issue of the Heroes Acre exhibitions, as well as exchange programs to mention uh, some of those. These countries remain fully committed to strengthening their bilateral relations in the field of sport, arts, and culture. If we then move to the next slide, um, we know that um, we have to, uh, government has embarked on a program that is called uh, post-COVID economic recovery and reconstruction. Now, most of South Africa, Cuba collaborations on cultural trade um, has um, were halted due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We were learned left and scale. That is part of the recovery, which will contribute to the economy and therefore to the issues of job creation. A collaboration with Cuba will then give us an opportunity to have our artists creating joint projects, uh, which have both economic spin-offs uh, as well as cultural education. And we believe that uh, that will assist in our economic recovery. So collaboration then with Cuba is more than the issue of financial. It also talks to looking at the countries, his two countries' histories, as well as struggle. So the Cuban economy blockade, as we all know, and justified blockade of a, a US a, makes it difficult to have any meaningful economic benefit. Hence, then the people to people contact is a crucial element in which we can be able to work together as these two countries in the field of culture and trade. Now, due to the COVID-19, also, we just want to indicate that uh, the economies of these countries were highly and severely affected. And uh, we then had to have these processes uh, stopped. But we then have agreed that we will restart this and look at everything that uh, has got cost benefit and how can such costs be managed or handled. That will be based on activity by activity, project by project, which will be discussed and agreed upon uh, upfront uh, prior implementation and what are the likely costs and how who will contribute uh, what or what will be a cost sharing model if that will be the approach. I wouldn't like to, to, to say much here except to remind ourselves about our founding father of democracy, as well as uh, the great uh, commandant uh, of uh, Cuba, and that is our founding father, Baba Nelson Mandela, who once had a state back when, um, in honor of, Fidel, uh, of President Fidel Castro, uh, former president, Kualitlatla Nelson Mandela had this to say, I quote, if today all South Africans enjoy the rights of democracy, if they are able at last to address the grinding poverty of a system that denied them even the most basic amenities of life, it is also because of Cuba's selfless support for the struggle to free all of South Africa's people and the countries of our region from the inhumane and destructive system of apartheid, I close quote. So there is a very strong foundation of these diplomatic relations between South Africa and Cuba. Ludwig, next slide, please. Jefferson, I'm not sure then if I have to proceed to the Brazil uh, agreement. Yes. I will so, by yourself. Yeah. Do so, do so, DJ. <laughs> Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members. 
Brazil um, is a country that has got a lot of similarities between itself or herself and South Africa. And as we all know, that uh, we are classified within, in terms of even the indices of SDGs uh, as, as um, the developing nations. So partnership with the countries of the South, such as the Federative Republic of Brazil, uh, are a critical component of our diplomatic ties as South Africa in the fields of politics, economy, as well as social convergence to fight and combat poverty, underdevelopment, and marginalization, and to achieve the goal set forth in the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. So if we look at that, Brazil then, as a strategic partner, it is based on the fact that their economy is one of the biggest in South America and in the globe. Relations with Brazil, we believe, will continue to grow in the political and social economic spheres. And that we will do through our bilateral agreements, while interregional cooperation also, as well as multilateral engagements uh, that do take place. Where do the relations with uh, Brazil come from? This is historical. If we look at what happened in 2003, where there was a formation of India-Brazil-South Africa Dialogue Forum which was then famously abbreviated as IPSA, which then uh, has fortunately uh, in some way contributed to the formation of now what we call Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, which is BRICS partnership in 2010. So the concentration of Brazilian international development and cooperation projects are in Africa. And uh, these projects, are the ones that help us strengthen these relations. So Brazilian foreign policy priorities, as well as shared identity with the African region, also shapes our relationship with Brazil. In fact, uh, if we all know and remember, during the, all the World Cups, when uh, South Africa doesn't reach the 16, we adopt a country. In the country, we would always adopt in football would be Brazil, and the player will be emulated as Pele. So it is important that uh, that uh, way of seeing Brazil as a window of opportunity is important. Now, this collaboration with Brazil is on film, which enables South African practitioners in the film industry to access funds and markets in both countries. This also then provide opportunities for sustainable jobs through project partnership and the sharing of cultural goods, crafts, as well as artistic and audiovisual co-op production. Cost implications, costs are always shared between the countries and they are always driven by project-based approach. And currently we have net cost implications as Brazil have not yet ratified the film treaty thereby allowing us opportunity to develop and have better programs on audiovisual field being undertaken. It is then expected of Brazil to ratify this treaty in the new year, which is 2023, after their general elections that are planned for December 2022. Honorable Chairperson, what are the areas of cooperation this is the most important groundbreaking treaty we have with them. And it's a first ever, and that is a, on the audio visual. The agreement aims to strengthen this film cooperation between the two countries, and then encourage the development of cultural relations. As we know that uh, exportation of culture through film makes people understand your identity, your landscape as a country, where it doesn't matter whether it's cultural or your heritage, but they just get to know also the people, the nature of people that they can engage with. It opens eyes without traveling physically to another country by just exporting your film or your documentaries. People begin to understand 
that your country is welcoming, but also is good for investment. So through then uh, this, we hope we will be able to boost cultural tourism as well as advance South Africa's cultural tourism, uh, sorry, cultural um, diplomacy, but also through the practitioners sharing skills and therefore then increase the contribution on skills development in the field of audiovisual co-production and film. The agreement therefore then is called audiovisual co-production agreement between ourselves and Brazil. Jefferson, this agreement was signed in 2018, as I've indicated earlier then, that we are awaiting Brazil to ratify it, uh, so that at the end of the day, it can then come become enforceable. Um, what is the validity period? Validity period after being uh, ratified will be two years, and they will then be renewable uh, in a successive period of a year. But each party has a right to terminate. In other words, Brazil can initiate this termination, or South Africa can initiate the termination of the agreement, which we hope we won't need. The notice period for termination by either country is three months. And this will be done again through diplomatic channels. Agreement then, as I've indicated earlier, uh, I will not repeat this. Uh, can we move to the next slide? Um, I've, I've also mentioned this. Uh, the only part I need to just uh, go back a bit, um, just the last paragraph there. The last part is that um, the, the two countries, it doesn't mean that um, at this stage, while we are waiting for Brazil to ratify, we then are at standstill and not able to collaborate. Through BRICS, we are still able to work together uh, within the BRICS framework. And then um, the two countries therefore then can still showcase films in each other's country. And uh, South Africa have received the invitation already to participate in the Rio Film Festival from the 6th to the 16th of October this year, 2022. I thank you, Chairman. Thank you so much, DG. Thank you for the, the, the briefing. Uh, honorable members, <clears throat> this is the time that you must uh, engage with the two briefings. To you, honorable members, let me take hands now. I've seen the hand of honorable Veronica. So far, I'm still seeing that hand. Uh, Go on, Honorable Veronica. Stephenson, uh, my question is, um, I want to know what the, um, I know um, the, the, the treaty, um, it is uh, both, both on both sides, uh, these, the, our contributions, but I would like to know um, how much is the, uh, the okay, what is the cost implication, the financial, of these collaborations, and um, if we can maybe have the stats of this, um, how much money is set aside or ring fenced for this? This is my one question. Um, um, I also want to find out, or well, currently uh, there are several Cuban artists um, that are detained, uh, resulting from a protest against censorship and um, the call for freedom of expression. I would like to know what the, the South African government stance uh, is on this matter. Um, and in what way will this agreement between South Africa and Cuba be beneficial to our local um, cultural workers? Um, okay, I'll leave it uh, to the rest of the committee to also contribute. Thank you, Honorable Fandik. Uh, Honorable Marshengose. Masibulise, Sislalu, Ditolutolo, if you do, I track it. It will. I think is well. Um, and Mandibuli say with department and with with the with the colleagues. Thank you very much. Um, 
Thank you for the presentation, uh, DG. I would love to, um, to, to just find out if uh, the department knows anything about the, um, the, 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 there was, uh, um, uh, radio, radio, uh, uh, like, you know, callers, you know, in, 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 in one of these, um, uh, community, community radio stations and also this, uh, uh, regional ones about, um, uh, the, the Brazilian doctors that, uh, are not actually working, but uh, 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 letting the, the, their colleagues to do the work, but they get paid more and all that. And it, it, it looked like they, there was a lot of hullabaloo going on about that. I want to find out if uh, the department knows anything about it. Uh, that's all uh, I have for now. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Matlingos. Honorable Dennis. Thank you, um, Chairperson. Uh, good morning to all. Um, and thank you for the presentation. I just wanted to ask on both um, uh, Cuba and Brazil, um, referring to the BRICS, the comment on uh, BRICS was established in 2010. If there were any uh, cultural visits uh, between South Africa and the two countries, and and what were the focus points uh, of of if there were any visits? Um, because I think it's more than ten years now that BRICS is 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 um, up and running, and what has South Africa benefited out of out of this um, um, out of out of BRICS in itself as as an integrated um, organization with these various countries? Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Dennis. Uh, Honorable Adams. Thank you, Chairperson. And uh, good morning to all on the platform. My questions is relating to the Cuba and Brazil issues. What is South Africa slash Cuba cooperation progress in effecting its objectives? And has the department included its implementation in the current financial year? Next question, what are the outcomes of the cultural manifestation in areas such as ba uh, ballet, book fair, eros, ecras, exhibitions, and various exchange programs? What are the outcomes of the agreement of 27 March 2021? 20, 20, and what impact did the agreement have? And my last question, what is the factor delaying the opera, opera, rationalization of the agreement with Brazil and has this matter been addressed through diplomatic channels. I thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Adams. Honorable Mshongo. I'm sorry. Thank you, okay. Thank you Chair. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we welcome the presentation. I wanted to find out what will happen if the country breaks the treaty. Let's say South Africa or Cuba breaks the treaty of or Brazil, what will happen? And what is the difference between a treaty and an agreement? Because I'm told that uh, international uh, laws, sometimes they don't obey international laws. And I wanted to find out what will happen to any country, let's say they break the so-called treaty. Why is it hard to enforce this international law to practice, so to say, because we tend to have them in paper, but when you check, you follow them, they're not practically implemented. She, I wanted to find out, I think uh, Honorable Van Dijk put it clearly, to have any budget as this department or as a, a committee that it's set aside for these treaties, how much is it per annum and how do they break it? down 
for us to know exactly the monetary value, for us to see the accountability. And what benefit do we have as sporting code or arts and culture department that we have, that we, it's tangible, that we can say this is working, there are agreement between X country and this country, these are the benefits. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Musongo. I'm sorry, Honorable Malomane, I was supposed to start with you, my apology. Uh, Honorable Monomani. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Greetings to everyone. My question it will be based on the issues of Brazil. Uh, has the department finalized its internal process and communicated through the diplomatic channels to put in force the government the agreement and outcome have been realized thus far? The other one is that is the agreement with Brazil renewed? No. Ana Malumani, where are you? Ana Malumani. We can't hear Honorable Malomani. Uh, on that note, uh, maybe she's going to come back uh, with maybe the outstanding questions that she's having. Let me give it this opportunity back to the department. Uh, thank you. <coughs> Teaching. No, thank you, Honorable Jefferson. Can I ask uh, first, uh, Leon, Ms. Lowa, the Director in International Relations, to, to please just uh, respond and then we will fill in uh, where there are gaps. Thanks. Thank you, Teaching. Thank you, thank you, Chairperson, and thank you to uh, the honourable me honourable members of the portfolio committee. Um, just to indicate, in terms of the question related to the annual budget, as a department, uh, we put aside an annual budget in terms of um, servicing our bilateral agreement through the unit called bilateral cooperation under the Chief Directorate International Relations. Um, as DG have indicated in the presentation, this is usually premised on the signing of the uh, memorandum of agreements or program of cooperation that details the specific activities that will be undertaken in a specific financial year in terms of uh, servicing that specific bilateral agreements. With regard to Cuba, it's indicated that there are cultural agreements currently in place Although with Brazil, in terms of the film, film co-production treaty, there is currently no budget implication as the treaty has not yet come into force. Uh, uh, it's also indicated that the film co-production treaty is usually done through our entities. In this case, it will be the Film and Video Foundation. Um, which receives the uh, allocation annually from the department in terms of implementing these uh, kind of uh, film co-production treaties. But as I indicated, with regard to the cultural manifestation, it usually comes uh, from our annual allocation as part of servicing these agreement, but also pending on the program of cooperation that we have signed in a specific area related to um, the cultural manifestations, whether it will be exhibitions, film festivals, etc. So it will be a mutual agreement between the two countries in terms of uh, when and how we will implement this agreement, obviously pending the availability of the budget as per our annual allocation. Uh, Chair, and then with regard to the question in terms of what is the difference between treaties and agreements, uh, we have noted that uh, usually the term is used interchangeably in terms of uh, treaties, usually referred to the multilateral agreements 
uh, or conventions that we sign is at the multilateral level with more than one countries. Agreements uh, re usually refer to our bilateral agreements that we have with specific countries on a country to country basis. For example, the one that we are talking about in terms of with Cuba and with um, with um, with uh, Brazil, uh, those are usually your bilateral agreements. The kind of agreements that are multilateral would refer to your agreements under the BRICS partnerships, where we have Brazil, Rus Russia, India, and China, as well as the India, India, Brazil, South Africa partnership agreements, where there is uh, um, more than one country in terms of those. In terms of enforcing the treaties, uh, those are usually uh, pending on the kind of treaty we have. Some uh, enforceability um, also comes to uh, the issue of uh, human rights treaties, violation of specific human rights. Uh, cultural treaties uh, are not usually that enforceable, uh, but it's also depending on the kind of uh, relations that we have with specific countries. Thank you, Chairperson. Honorable members. Can you, can you, can you show your face, Cleo? And then uh, I will ask John, Honorable Chair, Mr. Mukhaj, who also director in the International Thank Relations, yeah. to just Thank it. You. Thank you, John. Can you show your face? Yes, it did, DJ. Thank I'm you sharing, DJ. Thank you for reminding them, DJ. They must do uh, all of them. Thank you so much. When you, OK. Who's this? Uh, okay. Uh, track suits in a meeting of a committee. Ah, uh, did you? Dressing code in, in a committee meeting, did you? Please address that. Thank you. This is an official meeting, honorable members. We are having flu, but we are trying not to put uh, the warm tricks which also are having flu. Please, it must not happen again. No, okay. it will make, it will make sure it doesn't happen again yet. Honorable my, my apologies. Um, but Apology accepted. <laughs> Can I ask Mr. Mukhashwa if he has any addition? There was a question about difference between treaty and agreement. And can you, Mr. Mukhashwa? Uh, good morning, uh, honorable members, DG, and the rest of the executive and colleagues. I apologize for the direct suit. I had to rush to school in the morning. My daughter was vomiting, so the school called me, so I ran very quickly. And then I also forced to take the meeting here at home. I'm never. I'm always in a suit every day I'm at work. So today it was that emergency and I apologize profusely. Apology accepted. Yes. Um, the, an agreement that is signed between the two countries, and I'll specifically reference it to the arts and culture, it is in a broad sense not enforceable by law and it does not even carry any legal or financial obligations what we will normally then do is that we will after the agreement has been signed we will normally then the two countries will sit together and negotiate what we will call a program of action a program of action then became specific in terms of what we will do for a particular, for, for a period of a year or two years or three years. And then once that thing is agreed, then the various components that are supposed to, say for example, we say we are going to have collaboration in museums. So after we have identified the museums in South Africa and country B has also identified their museums, those yeah. entities will then come together to, to negotiate and put a program together of action together. That program 
will then be costed over a particular period. So, so the, the, then, then the agreement that they signed, the, the different entity that they need to implement the, the agreement, that then becomes more binding. And when I'm saying more binding, I'm not talking that you know it will it will end up in court. But the, 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 in terms of the cost, who's paying what at what, it, it it will normally be agreed then. And normally, there is sets of costs that are paid by hosting states. So when we go to Brazil, for example, or any other country, they will pay for our hosting, meaning the hotel, the transport, and all of that. And that it will be vice versa when we when they come to South Africa and the sending state will normally pay international flights. And any other cost will then be negotiated. So a treaty is normally what is referred to in multilateral as Madame Muir has, has alluded to. However, this treaty, this, these treaties, depending on the nature of the treaty, uh, South Africa has to ratify the treaty and that treaty becomes part of South African law. So for example, if we say preservation of heritage objects, and that is agreed in a multilateral forum. And then South Africa then ratified the treaty on the preservation of, or the stealing of heritage artifacts. Then South African parliament will then ratify the law. Then that becomes enforceable by law on the South African part. So if anybody steal the South African heritage object and send them to London, we can pursue that in terms of our own South African law and in terms of the, the international laws. But if South Africa does not ratify any treaty, it is not enforceable. So in the case of Brazil Film Treaty, for example, the South African parliament has ratified it. We are waiting for the Brazil. Once Brazil ratified it, it then means that any other project we do with Brazil in terms of the film treaty, if any party in the process of implementing the project and any party has spent money and the other party renegade to bring in their share of the cost, then the South African filmmakers and can through the South African court and through the international courts pursue the refund of the South African money. So, so that's how, but for that to happen, South Africa has to ratify the treaty and make it part of the South African law. That's where the difference is. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mukhasho. Um, any other input or any other follow-up questions? Uh, Honorable Mshongo. Uh, who's that? Thank you, Chair. Chair, I think the department must be frank and open to us. I've asked for the budget. They tell us about the amount. They don't tell us about figures. I think for us to do an oversight work accountability, it's so important for us to know how much are they budgeted for a month or per annum and how much they've used even previously with different treaties that they have. I think the question was clearly financial implication we don't get any funding. They're saying money, planes, exchange, we pay for them. How much? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Mshongo. Honorable members, the minister has joined us out of the, uh, the meeting which was attended in the morning. Honorable uh, Mamabolo. Uh, yes, my apologies uh, for not showing the video also. I'm in a very bad space. And I don't want to be taken out of the meeting because of the network. I have two quick uh, questions, um, Chairperson. Uh, with regard to the um, to community as de development, um, I can see that uh, Western Cape and Free State did not provide and um, corroborating evidence. And that is going to happen to the two provinces. My other one it is with regard to community ads, chairperson, because I can see they did not do well. But the other issue, chair, 
which I want to ask to the department. This is uh, with regard to their, what to call, um, their programs, uh, which, uh, which um, they failed to implement in the 2021-2022. What did the minister do about the matter? The last one will be on the 11 federations, which failed to meet the 50%. Uh, what to call system charter for transformation. Uh, what is the system that are going to be put on place to make sure that um, these 11 federations, um, they they adhere to the issue of uh, what you call, of transformation target, because it's a serious matter which we need to deal with. I can see that uh, mm -hmm. um, even during what you call Commonwealth Games, I Point saw... Honorable Mama Bulo, Honorable Mama Bulo, they were still on treaties. Uh, I'm not sure that your questions, uh, the, your questions are relevant to the, the next presentation, which is not yet presented. Oh, I was uh, on the, oh, sorry, Chair Ish. I was lost on this one, okay, sorry. Focus. Honorable uh, Mshongo, you have a point of order. <laughs> But thank you. You you took my thunder. Thank you, Gabonga. I don't. Okay. Oh, thank you, Honorable Mshongo. Uh, Honorable uh, Mashingosi. Thank you, Chair. Once again, um, DG made mention of uh, doctors coming from uh, Cuba, coming to help and everything, and. I was reminded of the 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 callers, South African callers, who were having problems with the doctors. That is why I raised that question here, uh, because uh, if the department is talking about it, maybe they have heard that there was that problem. So, can the DG answer on 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 that? To you know, because I asked, I said. Uh, if they, they, do, do they know anything about it, and if they do, what what have they done? Uh, you know, after 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 hearing about it, but the DG uh, decided not to even uh, you know entertain that. Thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, honourable members, must just uh, indicate that uh, they must because uh, I've, I've I've taken the follow up questions. Uh, maybe they were still going to, uh, but we are reminding that they must uh, answer your questions. Uh, now is the time that uh, the department must answer the questions, the ones that were not uh, responded and the new questions. Thank you, honorable members. Did you? No, thank you very much, honorable chairperson. I think both them. And Mr. Leon Noah, as well as uh, Mr. Mukashwa, have explained how the issue of budget gets determined. It's not what you put on the MOU. MOU or MOA is a framework that says these are the agreed upon areas of collaboration. Then the teams go back when develop an implementation protocol and a program of action, which identifies what will be done in which financial year and what are the cost implications. Once that is done, as Ms. Noah has indicated, then on the budget, overall budget of the international relations, as well as the budget of the ACPD, for instance, as well as the budget of the entity that is involved. Those parties then are put together to say, this is what we are able to fund for this particular program's implementation. We then confirm that that budget is available and it's going to be undertaken. For instance, when we do cultural services, we will say, who do we include in that? When people go to that country, 
we then say, okay, there will be films that will be shown in that country. Let's take filmmakers. We then take them there, and then there will be, is it for a week, or is it for two weeks that the film of South Africa will be shown? If that is a two weeks, what is the cost implication? But you don't put that in the MOA. In the MOA, you agreed that each party will take responsibility in funding of program. And therefore, sometimes is the other party that is receiving will then take costs responsible for accommodation. While the party that is dispatching will then take cost responsibility for flight tickets and stipends. Then the question of shipping of exhibition artifacts, if that is what is needed. So if the honorable members allow us is to then say, department, come back. Once you have finalized what you, which of these you're going to action in this year, which ones are you going to do, and then come back to us and tell us what, uh, then have you costed those? Here we were presenting the MOA and indicating the costing on the funding model, not the rents and cents per se, but we will cost them as we outline them after agreeing with the other country. Now, on the issue raising um, about um, the people being uh, the Brazilian doctors, I, I'm not aware of Brazilian doctors. The issue. Neither have I authority to speak about protestations of the, even if it was a Cuban doctor, as it were, because there is a department responsible for implementing that agreement. We were giving an overview, if you look at the title, talks to the background, to our relations with these countries. We then zoom in and talk about our part as a department on the objects of the agreement. Hence then, I am not the authority to speak on behalf of the Department of Health to deal with issues of doctors on what are they doing and what is their position. And the question, if it says, what is a government position? I can only ask the only people who sit there for communicating government position is called Department of Communications, which is GCIS, that then they normally communicate where does the government stand after cabinet. But I can't speak on behalf of government. I'm here to speak on behalf of the department. So the issue of having then people being muzzled, uh, protesting for their freedom of expression, again, is the same issue. I am not as a accounting officer of the department in a position to speak about protests for freedom of expression uh, in that country and say what is the government position. I, even if I were to know, I will not be able to, if I don't have authority to communicate that. So I just want to clarify those things, uh, Honorable Chairperson. But uh, I think on our side, we have answered the question uh, that we asked of us. Thanks. Thank you, teacher. Uh, any other input or, or I'm still seeing the, the follow-up and another question. Thanks, Chair. Uh, Tichi, I wanted to find out, has the department hosted any country before? If yes, has the department used money and how much was it? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Mishlong, Honorable Tichi. Well, thanks very much, Chairperson. Um, yes, we have. Uh, can I just ask John if you want to talk to that or Cleon? Uh, okay. DG, uh, Madam Niao, you want to go first? Anyone must take. John? 
honorable honorable members um yes we have hosted countries before can i also add that on this cuba agreement the department will this year spend about 800,000 rand in order to assist our recently formed academies, cultural academies, to improve their course design, uh, their syllabus, and uh, also we are looking at the restoration of traditional instrument. In fact, Cuba is a leading country in this area. Um, we, we are also looking at issues of ballet, working with Cuba as part of the broader performing art and syllabus, because Cuba is probably the number two in terms of ballet after Russia. Um, but, but of specific reference to Cuba is because uh, Cuba, um, their, their art form is very much similar to us because of the high number of the diaspora in, in Cuba. And, and because uh, 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 Cuba is not a Western country, but you know, uh, so there are similarities in that and in terms of their thinking. So, so that, and the people who are in the dance movement, they will tell you that their body formation is the same as African. So it, 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 it lenses to, to, to us and, we, and, and various South African ballet companies have hosted a uh, Cuban ballet in the country at no cost to the department. And what I want to say to the honorable members is that the agreement we signed are not in, in themselves for the department. The agreement facilitates the movement of artists across the board. Uh, there is no South African artist that will be able to go and perform in any other country in the world without the backing of the government. And the backing of government happens in two ways. Government issues this issues passports for the artists to be able to travel because artists, is, I mean, passports, I mean, government issues artists with passports to be able to travel. Government, through its various agreements they sign with, with those countries, are then able to travel the world. So, so the agreements are in themselves for that purpose. It is not for government departments specifically to implement the agreement itself, is to facilitate the entire cultural space to be able to, 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 to work everywhere else in the world. So government has the, its main job of creating an enabling factor, yes, there are a lot of instances where government brings in money. As I said, this year, we are taking the, 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 the Performing Art Academy to Cuba. Yes, we are assisting them to be able to network and connect with Cuba. But overall, after this visit, the various academies that have been sent for the study visit in Cuba and whatever agreements that they, they, they enter into will be at their own cost. It might also that government might contribute 5% of their total cost or at, at also at not at all. So, so, but the job of government in that sense, it is done. So when these agreements are being assigned and negotiated, that we are taking into consideration what is the need of the sector, which countries are important for us to negotiate with. So for example, the film treat with Brazil, it is not, it is not something that the no, department is, uh, has that, that, on its that is own. Fine, John. Okay, thank that you, fine, John. I think the question, uh, uh, the latter part of the question was direct, which um, was we did not come here with the uh, Honorable Mishongo's question about uh, with the template of watch and how much uh, we would ask a person if you allow us, other than the overview John has given, that we will then come back to you on the issue of the breakdown of the detail which country at what cost so that we do not misrepresent ourselves here because we came here to present the overview on the agreements today and if there is a need you will guide us Chairperson, so that we will then respond with those details honorable members uh, now can 
can I thank the department and the honorable members to, uh, with raising their questions. Now is the time that we must go to the, the next uh, presentation, the fourth quarter performance uh, to you, TG. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to present the fourth quarter performance of the financial year 2021-2022, which is January to March uh, last year. Honorable, uh, sorry, January to March this year, but in terms of the financial years, it is a previous financial year fourth quarter report. We have um, uh, the outline, honorable chairperson, talks to the purpose. And then we do the introduction and then performance overview and departmental performance uh, uh, results. And then uh, we go back to the breakdown of each branch and then we provide the financial report of the fourth quarter. A uh, chairperson in the outline, um, as I indicated on the purpose, is an obligatory um, accountability uh, that uh, we have to do and that is to report to the portfolio committee on sport arts culture and on our performance. This then enables the committee to perform its key function by law, which is an oversight responsibility on the work of both department and entities. Jefferson, if we look at then the introduction, we, our work, uh, we always outline that uh, we have an extension uh, of working with the entities uh, as delivery agents, but also this is a concurrent function in terms of the constitution of the Republic, uh, and therefore then work with the provinces, but who have their own indices. And then, but what brings us all together, whether it is entities or it is uh, the question of uh, the, the provinces is about social cohesion and nation building. All our work at the end of the day is about bringing people together from the different walks of life, whether by race or by gender, but we bring them together. But also then to provide infrastructure, and which is quite critical and within the means available to enable the sport, arts, culture, and heritage to thrive. We then also provide financial support to the creatives regarding as well as the sport federations in relation to the issue of mass participation in sport development. And that we do through the ring fence budget that is the grants and transfers that we provide. We had the challenge of the closure of schools as our years are not the same, but this is the year that uh, we sometimes, now that things seem to be a bit normal, forget that 2021, 2022 year is a year that was also ravaged by serious challenges of COVID-19, impacting on a number of work we had to do, particularly when it comes to work that brings people together. So if we consider the mass uh, convening of uh, South African cultural events, um, which it will also serve as super spreaders, it was then important that um, all the time government will consider whether to ease the restrictions or not. And that in itself impacted on this sector the longest of periods and therefore greatest of negative impact. So where possible, we would use a combination of hybrid or um, interface to phase of physical engagements. But we had that challenge. But also then this audited uh, fourth quarter performance report provides then the progress for 1st of January to the 31st of March 2022. And we also outline what challenges did we face 
at during this year. And then we give you the financial year targets uh, as outlined in our annual performance plan. Chairperson, the overview is as follows. We had 42 targets, of which 31 were achieved and the 11 not achieved. And the, the 31 translate to 74% of the fourth quarter targets, while 11% constitutes the 26%. This pie chart depicts that. If we then move on our chairperson to performance uh, and the targets not achieved, per branch, contributing to the 11. This is a breakdown. Program one had five indicators they were to achieve in quarter four, and they were unable to achieve one out of the five, and that is in relation to services that were to be modernized. We will explain later the rationale. And then program two, which deals even more with issues of people, gatherings, mass gatherings that are regarded as super spreaders. And you'll see that most of the targets affected are targets where people were supposed to converge other than the infrastructure component. So they had 11 of which five were not achieved. Of the five, three of these, two of these relate to the mass participation. And that is the number of people involved in organized sport and creative and active recreation. The second one that involves mass participation is number of learners in the National School Sport Championship per annum. Then the other target not achieved, also affected by this issue of COVID, was the number of federations meeting 50% or more of all the prescribed charter transformation targets. And we'll explain how was this affected. The fourth one is community outdoor gyms and children's play parks here to be constructed. And then the fifth one is the heritage legacy facilities, which talks also to the resistance and liberation heritage route and sites that we had planned that must be developed and or maintained to transform the national heritage landscape. Then program uh, three had 16 targets, of which four were not achieved. And the four not achieved are the following. The number of provincial community arts uh, development programs not implemented uh, due to two provinces that could not uh, deliver on this. And then number of moral regeneration movement projects financially supported also here we will explain it later as we unpack this presentation. Number of community conversations or dialogues led to foster social interaction, as well as the number of monitoring reports on the implementation of social compact for social cohesion in nation building. The last program that did not um, uh, achieve one of its targets out of 10 is uh, the issue of um, uh, HPP. Heritage promotion and preservation target not achieved is related to the indicator talking to the heritage legacy projects where exhibitions content was to be developed. So, if we look at program by program, the Honorable Chairperson, we then make the following breakdown. Um, admin has indicated one one out of five not achieved. So this is just a depiction pictorially or graphically to indicate performance and so that we, what we said can then be done through the graphs. So this then helps anyone to understand exactly what is the look of performance per program. If we then look at the, continue with the program specific now, under administration, because this is a report, Chairperson, I take it that uh, we all know what is the purpose of our program one, as an administration which is led by the DTG corporate services, but just to indicate that it includes support functions, 
uh, uh, planning functions, uh, that we have international relations function, and uh, therefore then it is about uh, also then uh, ministry as well as management, uh, as well as the office of the chief financial officer. Can we then move to the next? We will say we had outlined this. So on the task, honorable chairperson, the targets that were achieved are the following during this quarter under review. Number of intents enrolled against funded pools. We have to have 5%, we had 5.6% of intents that were enrolled, and that uh, translates to 80 intents that were enrolled out of the 534 funded posts. And then if we move to the next uh, slide, this is the target we said uh, we needed to modernize our systems. We had two targets for quarter four. Of this, um, one target was not achieved while the other target was achieved in, uh, in quarter three. This call center uh, project uh, only commenced uh, uh, quite uh, late uh, because we needed to appoint a service provider. The delays uh, to this were not because the service provider uh, or, or we had failed to do our work, but when the service provider was appointed, when it was time for us to enter into SAAs and MOUs, uh, his um, tax uh, clearance issues arose. Uh, that it had just expired, so we had to then allow the process for them to renew that uh, tax clearance post at a time when they applied the tax certificate and when the appointment was still valid. But the validity period then lapsed uh, as we were dealing with the adjudication process. After that, we needed, in terms of the law, we can appoint them officially until they are tax compliant. The next target at Chairperson is in relation to the number of campaigns. We had one and we were able to achieve that. On the issue of a geographical names a system, this system is a very critical system for us, Chairperson and the honorable members. And so it was achieved in the quarter three. And so it was achieved earlier than planned. So it so it was one out of uh, two that were achieved. Can we move to the next slide? This one talks to the campaigns on uh, the issue of uh, profiling the work of the department. We had one target for this quarter, and that was done uh, in line with the Human Rights Month, um, so that uh, which was then activated by the department. If we move to the next slide, is that? Uh, the issue of uh, ensuring that the people who do business with the department are paid if they submit valid invoices within 30 days has been met. We give a breakdown per month and so that we are able to then indicate uh, also the values that are included. And uh, there is just an error there of uh, if we look at uh, it says April was most of the money that was spent in March, we needed to just correct that uh, CFO. But that is January, February, and March. And the total invoices processed was 640. And the amount paid uh, is 123 million rand, 425,950 rands, 57 cents. And we were able to make that target. If we move to the next target, it's about the functionality, sorry, it's about the constitution of the boards so that they are then fully established 100% and all the boards of our entities were properly constituted during this quarter. We move to program two, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Just as a reminder, program two is about four sub uh, chief directorates, the winning nation, the active nation, support support, as well as infrastructure. If we move to the targets uh, directly without explaining each of the programs, can we do that, uh, Lord Wick? Um, Chairperson, 
we had a quarter for a target of 10, that is at least to be provided with scientific support, and we're able to do 96. Uh, you might then ask uh, what could have happened here. Um, if you look at the athletes supported, uh, one athlete was uh, directly supported by the development and the 95 of them at least were supported uh, on ad hoc basis. Uh, and that is uh, means uh, that is from support from, for instance, uh, athletics, uh, SA, uh, USASA, um, because it is important that we work with those uh, as our partners. Uh, so the University Sports South Africa is one of the bodies that uh, assist us in terms of preparing and making sure that there are camps and athletes are kept and then provided uh, with that and then they're able to participate in the World Student Games. Um, and that happened in July 2011 in July 2022. If we look at the next target, we had uh, a thousand number of athletes supported through academies, of which we're able to do 2,169 of those athletes. The, the reason for overachievement there is a, a indicator that a provinces needed to respond to additional needs which were arising from assessment of their delivery environment. And we always encourage them to do more if possible. We then had a number of people actively participating in organized sport and regional events. A hundred thousand was a target for quarter four. However, due to a number of restrictions on the gatherings, we were only able to have 73,810, uh, of which then they were able to participate, and this target was then not uh, achieved, a uh, vulnerable chairperson. And then if we move to the next target, number of sport and recreation campaigns and events implemented. This was achieved two out of two, the ministerial outreach program, as well as the end of and golf development. If we look at the next targets, we also had a number of house and clubs, given the basic requirements such as equipment, as well as attire. We had the target of 750, of which we were able to do 1,666. Uh, so that uh, this includes schools, clubs, as well as hubs, who were provided with this uh, equipment. The target not achieved relates to the number of learners. Uh, we had a target of 2,100. We missed this as we were able to have uh, 2,062 learners. Uh, we missed by 38, but some of this is that uh, the rest of the evidence given for, for was inadequate, so we could not report it as achieved until they give us additional uh, evidence that we want, and then we would change this number. But we couldn't at the time of finalizing our audited performance because evidence is what drives us to report whether achieved or not achieved. The next uh, target was about a uh, district school sport tournament, 15,000. Well, here we were lucky enough to have 47,531 learners being involved in the district school sport tournament. And uh, this was because there was a, 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 a permission to now be able to resume sporting activities in schools. And then more learners were able to participate. Percentage of federations meeting the 50% or more of all the prescribed charter transformation targets. We had a 15 out of 19 that they needed to do so in the fourth quarter, and only four were able to do so to meet the 50% parameter target. Uh, that is a self set. And uh, uh, here, clearly, that uh, the national fair were planned to subscribe to their charter uh, from this 15 and only four, as I've indicated. This then resulted in the deviation of the 11 federations who did not meet the set target, which then clearly is a challenge uh, during that time. But most of them depended also to be able to monitor what happens on the gatherings, which had the restrictions for them to just monitor what happens. So it was roughly 
uh, that was able to do this in tennis, and they were then they were these things that were clearly and as well as suffer, and the others were clearly unable to make that time. We then have uh, the 2.9 talks to the number of municipalities provided with technical management support in 50 municipalities here we're talking about. In particular, this is in relation to the MIT and uh, infrastructure programs. And then we were able to indeed provide all of them with the support they require. The last one is a uh, outdoor gyms and children's play parks. Target was for 10, we were able to do six. Um, there was a challenge of the service provider here that we needed to deal with in terms of contractual issues. Uh, and therefore then the construction at three sites um, was also had to be reprioritized um, and that then made them not to do the other four that was on the original plan. So after we engaged with the service provider, they are back on site to resume the work and this will be completed as we indicate uh, that uh, in, the in the first quarter of 2022, which has just passed and you are reporting on. Chairperson, um, the last one, the, the next one was uh, the issue of the number of heritage uh, legacy facilities, that is including the resistance and liberation heritage route sites developed. This here, there were uh, three targets and uh, three of them, we could not be able to have them completed. And that is a new Guinea in terms of their status. This Enogeni precinct is the project that is uh, now being uh, given to KZN Sport and Recreation uh, Development Arts and Culture. Um, there was a delay in the appointment of a service provider here. As a TPWI KZN indicated that uh, there were things that they needed to finalize in terms of the designs that are required um, for the service provider to be able to then start being having a shovel on the ground. So that uh, meeting then only kicked off uh, on the 2nd of March and the project was then given to the service provider for them to do that concept design. Um, and they have done that and they've given us the design, but we wanted them to give us different types of materials so that we can check whether the cost is effective is it cost effective um, material that is going to be used, but with durability? And that is where uh, they are, and they have come back with that. So we've got that design now, but it's just to finalize the costing thereof. So if we move to the, the other legacy project, which is John, uh, Dr. John L. Dube House, where we had uh, some contractual related challenges here. Uh, with the implementing agent, and therefore then payment of for work done in quarter three had to be delayed, uh, so that uh, we finalize those contractual issues before we can be able to pay. We have then engaged with the service provider, and there is a catch-up plan to still try and complete this project in time, this financial year. The last one is the Sar apartment, we then um, wish a day the center of remembrance. Uh, this one, as we know, our implementing agent, which is GPWI, had had a lot of run-ins and change of uh, service providers to, 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 to construct this area. This has led then to the minister uh, engaging with uh, the minister of GPWI, and the uh, consequence to that, then yeah. there has now been uh, an agreement uh, that uh, this will be a co-management responsibility so that Department of Public Works and Infrastructure does not work on their own, but work collaboratively with the department, because at least we also have now an infrastructure unit with capable people, so we'll be able to monitor this project so that it come to its conclusion. So there is an MOA that has been uh, drafted and was given to DPWI to be able to also look at with their legal team. And then once that is done, the two ministers 
will then sign this MOU, which the minister had given specific instruction that I follow up with the relevant DG uh, so that uh, this is done before end of this month. Honorable Chairperson, that was the issue of problem two. Problem three, Honorable Chairperson, as I indicated, they've got 16 targets and uh, their structure is national language services, cultural and creative industries development, international cooperation, social cohesion and nation building, as well as the Mzansi Golden economy. I will not go into detail about each of their sub of their chief directorates, but to the directly to the targets. For quarter four, there were two, two, three targets. They achieved five multi human language technology projects, which were fully uh, supported at Jefferson. So if we look at how we are able to achieve this, um, the six projects uh, per annum uh, was to be achieved. Uh, however, in 2021 financially, the budget was uh, was cut as a result of the department had to reduce its target to four. If we remember, because of COVID, we had to revise our APP targets. Now, in August, then, however, we were able to receive 3.6 million rent from National Treasury. Then we used that to add more projects, and therefore, then that is two projects more. Hence, we speak of a uh, six projects then in terms of the year uh, were supported, but we're able to do five in the fourth quarter. Jefferson, um, the, in this quarter, uh, we were to do documents that are translated and edited 100% was done, and then um, we continue to do so in this target. There was no target for the bursaries, uh, to be awarded for qualified language practitioners for this quarter. We do that in the other quarters earlier, as per the calendar year also of the universities. Seven targets were been to uh, seven, uh, target was seven for access uh, platforms financially supported and seven local and international market platforms were financially supported. This was achieved, same as the number of capacity building projects these were also achieved 20 out of 20, um, as they were all able to provide us. Though we did uh, 21, but one of them, because of inadequate uh, verification, we were not able to include it here as, as, as part of that. However, the 21 was achieved. The target not achieved, community health development have indicated. We do this through our, our provinces as we provide the funds, and then nine were to be done by as one per province. Unfortunately, Western Cape and Free State uh, resulted in not helping us with that to get evidence to prove that they have implemented these projects, and therefore we report that seven out of nine. If we go to the next slide, uh, two was the target and two were done here in terms of the international engagements. And then of the number of moral regeneration projects, uh, we had a target of three, and three projects were supported. That is in relation to anti-femicide dialogue, workshops on the charter of positive values, as well as the webinar on incubating future leaders. That is in relation to issues of ethics and the uh, value-based leadership. However, at this time, we were still grappling and engaging with the MRM, to provide us with audited financial statements. Uh, hence, then we had to withhold some of the funds until they give us that. Hence, we were reporting this as, as not achieved because we needed first to transfer money only on condition they have given us audited financial statements. Due to that delay, then two other projects could not be implemented in this got as planned. And then if we look at the next one, community conversations, as I indicated earlier, we had planned three, five to be done, and unfortunately we were able to do three. And so one target was not achieved, but at the end of quarter three, which has indicating that the program had already implemented 17 of those projects. 
As a result, in quarter four, the program implemented outstanding three instead of the planned five. Hence, then the target for quarter four is recorded as not achieved. And then in relation to number of youth forecast arts development programs, this was one out of one. Same thing here, we had a target of five in terms of advocacy platforms and social cohesion um, by social cohesion advocates. You know, they were able to do eight. There were three additional that were required due to the prevalence of bullying in schools in particular and the challenges of anti-foreigner sentiments that uh, are being uh, peddled uh, in relation to Operation Tutula issues. And then the social compact on social cohesion and nation building, there was no report required. If we move to the next target, we had um, the issue of the social compact. Uh, here, honorable uh, chairs and honorable members, the monitoring report is dependent on the availability of the compact. We are still finalizing the compact, which we had intended to finish and, and have it uh, finalized, and then we start with the monitoring. However, uh, due to the challenges we had uh, on this area, the social compact is being finalized. We appointed the, so the, the service provider to just do the final consultations, which are not as easy as we thought. And therefore, then we are now at a point where once that compact is then signed off, we will then be able to have the monitoring of its implementation as a target. Then the number of gender-based violence and femicide programs financially supported, target was one, and this was uh, indeed achieved. Then we had number of projects on creative industry supported through Mzansi, and the target for this quarter was five. However, we were able to do 51 in the creative industry that we supported under Mzansi Golden Economy, and this was based on the heightened demand uh, as COVID-19 restrictions were eased, and therefore the development was able to respond positively by reducing rather the grant amounts and therefore covering more of the projects than anticipated so that we spread the cake no matter how thin it is so that a lot of people who had suffered unable to practice their craft and earn a living could also benefit. Then the last one is artists and placed in schools. Target was 300 um, and we were able to do 325. And uh, we have now achieved where we have always wanted to ensure that all provinces are able to have artists placed in schools. This was the last target for program three. And then program four, Chairperson, is a um, if we move to, to the, so before that, then the issue of the circle, Chairperson, um, is that um, we have a research arm, and this research arm is the one that enables us to plan better and they had to do the so called the, the research and give us reports. We are the Chairperson with the performance of circle, they never fail and they've produced more reports to inform us about the landscape of our cultural creative sector. And now they're also doing research in the area of sport. And that is 21 reports and 21 were reduced. And then the number of what were produced, the number of films and documentaries, the target was 10 and we were able to do 10. These documentaries and, and short films are talking to the stories of the history of liberation, cultural as well as heritage importance, because we realize that if we don't document this in one way or the other, then it gets lost and we have nothing to bequeath to the next generation. Hence then, we negated this target. So those are the 16 um, uh, that were to be delivered in this quarter and the other two chapters in as indicated were not for reporting. Program four 
is about heritage promotion and preservation. Heritage promotion is one chief territory, national archives, another, as well as the services related to the library. These are the sub-programs that are falling under this, and I'll not go into detail. Out of that, for quarter four, the target is the number of books documenting living human treasures. Target was five, and we were able to do six, uh, because Ms. Mbulu, as well as Ms. Kastasmin, requested to be documented uh, separately. Uh, because the fact that they are known as a couple doesn't mean that they are then having the same contribution. They've got similar contribution, but different as per their own role as individuals. So it had to be documented as individuals. So we've got six. Then number of public awareness activations on hashtag on the flag campaign. So we planned and seven we done on this hashtag and the flag campaign. And then the number of flags uh, provided to schools with a target of 20 of which 32 were provided. And then the number of heritage policies developed. Our target was a digitization of the arts, culture and heritage sector policy to be updated. This was done. And then we had target of two workshops uh, to advance knowledge on national symbols. We were able to conduct seven. And then the target that was not achieved relates to the number of heritage legacy projects where exhibitions or content has been developed. And here, only one out of the three pros was outlining content in the three legacy projects have been developed and signed by the DG. And that is the one of Mama Winnie at the Gisela Mandela a Museum in the Free State. The other two, as we indicated for Sarah Bartman, as well as our Tambo Kandu Remembrance, have not yet been uh, finalized. Um, and um, we needed adequate where work has been done, just adequate uh, evidence. Of a, and that is through payment stubs or SLA to support projects. So the projects also had uh, challenges of service providers. Uh, this is a specialist area. You don't take anybody to set up an exhibition in a museum. And therefore, then we needed to get the best possible service providers to do that work. And that had an impact on the time, on the turnaround time. Then the number of progress reports on resistance and reparation heritage route target was one report, one report was done. Chairperson, I believe that uh, the issue of records, which is quite important for preservation and uh, making sure that it is accessible through the digital platforms now, we had a target to do 25,000 child data bands, as well as the TRC audio tapes, 20 of them. And uh, instead, under the treason trial, a total of 49 records. Um, and if you combine that, it's 27 of the treason trial and 22 of the TRC. These are important uh, recordings that now can be accessed by South Africans, irrespective of where they are. They don't have to travel to the archive. So a website that they can utilize to link in because it is important that we know what happened during prison trial, end to end. That is why this is the same thing with the TRC audio tapes, so that these are also kept and preserved into time and memory. <coughs> <coughs> The last target is a newly built a module library. 26 were planned and 26 were financially supported. I think uh, I believe that uh, the, <clears throat> the last one will be the does that notices uh, on the issue of standardized uh, geographical names. The plan was to have one report uh, or cassette published and indeed were able to do so. 
Can I then ask the CFO to take over? Thank you, Chair President. Hey, please take care. <laughs> Uh, drink the warm water, honey and lemon ginger. Uh, CFO, thanks, Chair. Okay. No, thanks, uh, Honorable Chair. Uh, I'll be presenting the financial uh, expenditure. Uh, next slide. Okay. Uh, the overall uh, departmental expenditure uh, by the 31st March 2022, uh, it was sitting at around 5.6 uh, billion, uh, which is 98.2% uh, against the budget of 5.7. So if you look at it, we have underspent by 1.8%, uh, which is a total fee of 103 billion, which is less than the treasury uh, material under expenditure, which is 2%. And then if you go to your composition of employees, then you see that uh, we have spent 88.6% against the budget of 379 million. Uh, we have uh, 43.1 uh, million under expenditure. And if you look at the 103 that I've mentioned, uh, the under expenditure of composition of employees is actually the biggest uh, portion there, which is about 42% of that 103 million. And then we have programs uh, that uh, underspend on the composition of employees, uh, administration at 20 million, and then uh, program two, uh, which is sports at 3.9, and then program three, ACDP at 7 billion, and then program four, which is heritage at uh, 10.7 million. And the reason for that is because of uh, uh, different challenges that we have in the department, uh, because uh, for in case uh, post that we field, uh, unfortunately, there are people that were internally getting those posts, and then that also creates a backlog because as we, we feel, then the other posts become vacant again. And also, that uh, for the financial under review uh, from June to 31 March uh, 21, June 2021 to 31 March 2022, uh, 51 posts uh, were filled. So it just showed that we did uh, feel a lot of posts, like I said, but unfortunately, because of that, the characters that people get from which we see in the department, then that has caused us a problem. And then if you go to your goods and services, uh, we've got an under expenditure of 4.7 million. And the reason for that uh, is because that uh, uh, that treasury regulation that was put on hold uh, from the 16th of February and make it more difficult for us to pay, to, to, to spend 100% on your goods and services. So we did have that difficulties, uh, which it also affect the current financial year, the new one. Next slide. And then if you go to provinces and municipalities, uh, uh, under your uh, conditional grant of uh, mass participation and libraries, uh, we, we have spent 100% because that is a transfer. Also under departmental agencies, 100%. Uh, the reason there you, you see uh, there is a, a, around the, a budget that is three, okay. Uh, departmental agency that is uh, the accounts and cap I mean, departmental agency and accounts capital, uh, the expenditure there is 287 million, which is 98.6, against the final appropriation of 301. Uh, that is also the transfer. Uh, next slide. Uh, higher education, uh, there was a budget of 4.4, I mean, budget of 5.9, but we spent 4.4, which is 74%. And the reason for that, it was non compliance of the University of Thailand Bosch not submitting a compliance document. And then, foreign government and international organization, uh, we, there was a budget of uh, 5.7, uh, and then we spent 5.5. And then, uh, that is also as a result of. Uh, Extension rate uh, as we make the payment, uh, but the amount is 193,000. Next slide. Uh, public cooperation and, uh, and private enterprise, uh, this is more under your MGE. Uh, we have spent 108 million uh, against the budget of 118. So the 10 million under expenditure there is because of the issue of the compliance uh, by the beneficiaries. Uh, to submit uh, for us to able to pay the second changes and other things. And also the issue of the item creation process. Uh, 
took longer than anticipated, which results in trading effect of the process that need to be complete. Because this uh, item creation is done by our national treasury. So the way they, they want us to do, they want us first to process all the application and approve them before they can create any item. And uh, next slide. A non-profit institution, uh, the expenditure of uh, 368 uh, million was spent, which is 98% uh, uh, and, and the 2% of that under expenditure uh, is about 6 million. Uh, uh, one of the reason is that last transit to the moral regeneration movement could not be made due to non-submission of the financial statement. And committee as a development program budget for under NPI were later discovered to be a, an agency, not the, it was a wrong classification, but uh, it was paid. And also the, the issue of the, the request that were not able to meet the target in terms of the budget that was set. And then under your nonprofit institution capital, uh, the expenditure of 46.2 million, uh, uh, which is 94% uh, uh, of expenditure, against the budget of 49.1 million, uh, uh, which is about, um, which is which is then the under expenditure that is 2.9 is due to the Kaifa Semenya Foundation project complete in line with the uh, signed MOU and request to, to ratify the Inyanga as development as one of the upgrading. Next slide. Uh, under your household, uh, the, the budget that is, 400, is 47 million against the expenditure of about 44.2 million, which is 92%. And the reason for under expenditure is 3.7 million. Uh, there were difficulty with obtaining compliance document from MGE beneficiary for us to be able to spend that uh, uh, money, total money as allocated to us. And also the capacity from this support unit, especially around contracting, uh, because the high volume of application that we receive, uh, it was too high. Next slide. Uh, machinery and equipment. Uh, there is a, a expenditure of 8.5 against the budget of 24 million, and the underspending there is about 16.4 million, and that is uh, uh, as a result of the purchase order which was issued before the end of the financial year, but delivery could not happen by the end of the financial year, which was supposed to come from Ireland. Next slide. Uh, under heritage asset, uh, uh, there was a 7.3 million uh, that was underspent. And the reason there is for HVAC uh, uh, invoice that could not, uh, I mean, invoice that was submitted, but without a supporting document by a department of Public Works. And then um, the other one is 100%, next slide. Okay, next slide. This is the uh, expenditure uh, per program. Uh, administration uh, is, uh, un is, is basically spent 459 million, uh, which is uh, less by 37.1 million, which is an under expenditure. And if you look at it there, uh, that 37 million, 20 million is, is composition of employees of that 37 million, and the 16 million is a storage that storage that was supposed to be uh, delivered before the end of the financial year. Uh, under recreation and development, uh, we've got uh, 20 million of under expenditure. Uh, which uh, part of it 3.9 million is your composition of employees. And then 7.2 7 is for heritage asset uh, uh, because the invoice for that uh, uh, heritage asset could not be submitted by public works before the end. And then uh, under arts and culture and promotion development, we've got the uh, uh, 31.5 million that was underspent. And the reason being that uh, the issue of 10 million of MGE compliance issue that could not be met. Uh, by by beneficiary in terms of submitting their own financial statement and also supporting document for us to be able to pay uh, the money to them. And then you have the heritage and promotion, uh, which is uh, basically the 10 million strictly under your composition of employees under program form. And that is a total that I was speaking about that on the departmental level we have underspent by 103 
a million. The next slide. And then the next slide, I've already talked about the, the issue of the composition of employees, uh, the under-expenditure of that 43 million. And I've, I've also spoke about the goods and services uh, of 4.7 of under-expenditure to say that because of that treasury uh, law that was put on hold. Uh, next slide. Uh, uh, next slide. Okay. Uh, Chair, this is basically now on the program level. Uh, I'm not going to go through the uh, the, the 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 narration. Uh, ministry spent uh, four million uh, with the under expenditure of one point two million. Uh, management spent about sixty one million uh, with under expenditure of seven point seven million. And strategic management and planning underspent by three hundred and eight thousand. And corporate savings uh, underspent by uh, 20 million and also the CEO was underspent by about 8 million and office accommodation uh, underspent by 522,000. Next slide. I've already explained the, the 16 million and the 20 million under composition of employees. Uh, next slide. And then I've already also explained the narration. Next slide. Uh, under your recreation, under your recreation and development and sports promotion, uh, you've got you've got four pro, four sub program: winning nation, active nation, support sports and infrastructure. So under winning nation, there is an under exchange of two point three million, and then active nation is two million. Is I mean is two thousand, and then support uh, sport is one point two million. And then infrastructure support is about 16 million, which is more into those invoices that you talked about uh, from Department of Public Works. And then uh, next slide. Next slide. Okay. Uh, next slide. Okay, I'm not going to talk about the narration I already explained, Chair. Uh, next slide. And uh, yeah. In program three, uh, those are your sub program under program three. And then I've already spoken about, I've talked to, to the composition of employees that uh, the under expenditure under the ACDP is how much. And also the issue of uh, Mozambique Golden Economy, the reason of that under expenditure. Uh, next slide. Uh, current payments uh, has the 7.7 .7 million that I talked about. Uh, and then departmental current uh, agencies uh, for you talk to. Next slide. And okay, next slide. Next. Uh, I've already talked to those. Next slide. And then program four, which is the last program. Uh, as you can see there, you've got 10 million under National Archive Service, uh, which is. Uh, the biggest figure of under expenditure. Next slide. Uh, as you see, the conversion of employees that I've already mentioned that uh, uh, under program for the major under expenditure is on the conversion of employees of 10 million. Next slide. Uh, the overall under expenditure of this program is 13 million, which 10 million is conversion of employees. Uh, I'll end here. Thanks very much. Uh, honorable members, it was a long uh, presentation, but I'm suspecting that we know where to focus and where to ask clarifications. Uh, I'm taking now that uh, DG CFO was the last one to present. Is it not so, DJ? <coughs> Is DJ still in with us? Uh, honorable members, can I take this opportunity to give you time to ask questions, if you don't mind? Now is the time that I must. I, I don't know whether 
uh, they wanted to, that they must present the 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 quarter one, but I'm suspecting it can be too much. Uh, uh, you see the time that we've taken to present this one. Let, let's start uh, by asking questions. Like now I was trying to check OTG, what do they want to do? But I don't hear himself. Uh, TG? TG, any, any leadership from the department who can tell us whether you want to <coughs> present another a presentation or can we, en <coughs> can we engage yes. with yes, honorable chairperson. Yeah. We, we, would, we would prefer honorable chairperson that we just present uh, the first quarter performance and then uh, it would be much uh, then easy to have a flow which might um, assist the committee to have the overview if that is fine with the chair we would welcome that approach okay uh, don't be discouraged honorable members i'll load your hands uh whilst in the order that you raise it let's uh, get another presentation with your respect honorable members it will assist us thank you so much go on tg <laughs> Honorable Chairperson, this is now for the uh, report of performance for the first quarter of two of financial year 2022 2023. Um, the different the, the, the outline is as per uh, indicated on this slide people's introduction, performance overview, the comparison of the first quarters that is year on year comparison and then departmental performance overview results, and then program specific and the expenditure report for the first quarter. Chairperson, the purpose remains the two key objectives of why we report to the portfolio committee. Firstly, accountability, and the second one being the issue of enabling the committee to do its work of oversight. If we then move to the background, in the background, we're still talking of the same department, but uh, the emphasize is the area that uh, ours is to develop and transform the sport, arts, culture, heritage landscape um, uh, sectors, as well as uh, then uh, ensure that we harness their socioeconomic contribution, uh, creating a better life for all the citizens, particularly those who are in this sector to thrive. Our then focus is about uh, the aspirations of a transformed, active, creative, and winning nation, which will have its sense of pride, inspired by excellence in the area of athletics, in the area of athletes, as well as creatives or artists, but also that uh, in our APP for this year, as this is a first quarter report, we remain with a clear understanding of our mandate, uh, and that is to lead and create the enabling environment for social integration of peoples of South Africa from all the different walks of life, but also that our mandate is to make that positive contribution to strengthening sport, arts, and culture eradication of divisions and injustices of the past in this sector while fostering unity and creating shared sense of patriotism as we know that both creatives and athletes they end up on the international podium representing our country hoisting our flag but also that the nation uh, must be encouraged about being proudly south african the department and its delivery agents then, which I indicated earlier, provinces and entities, work towards making sure that there is support as well as promotion and facilitation of our work. They are an extension arm of the delivery of the mandate of the department. We have then 
as we have indicated, the four programs with their subprograms. And these programs are outlined as follows as an academic exercise. In the term, we have uh, opportunities that will drive transformation agenda and the new business models for the sector, particularly post COVID, in how we re engineer and reposition and reimagine how this sector look like going forward. But also the identification and development of a holistic, highly marginalized and under-resourced provinces, who still do not have facilities or platforms for them to enable the creatives as well as athletes to be able to then practice their craft or exercise their talents. Provide professional uh, sports system uh, with support. In that way, we need to then say how to respond to the demands of the fourth industrial revolution and how can this in our sector be able to be utilized. Uh, recently, there's an emerging, for instance, trend on what they call e-sport and how can we as South Africans not be left behind as we look at new and innovative solutions to support our problems. They're ensuring that the talent is encouraged to emerge from all communities in an equitable manner. In other words, your condition and your context must not be the limit to your achieving your full potential. Seeking new ways of forming strategic collaborations by mobilizing resources, knowledge, and creativity. We talk here, as we had mentioned, a number of issues that relate to academies, incubator programs, so that we are able to mobilize resources, ensure that knowledge is shared, and that there is advancement in the area of creativity and innovation in our area. Promotion of national symbols and pride in and appreciation of our shared heritage sites. South Africa has got the most number of sites um, that are regarded and declared as world heritage sites uh, in the continent. And we need to continue with this by ensuring that more and more of our heritage sites are well known, utilized, people take pride, and that is why we then work towards getting them also inscribed um, in the UN uh, World Heritage List. Ensuring then that uh, mass participation and sport development. This is because our duty is to ensure that uh, South Africans lead healthy, active lifestyles. So the first quarter performance, therefore, is then providing progress between the month of April to June 2022. The challenges that we are facing as a department, which we have always known, continue to besiege us, particularly in terms of our budget. We still need to indicate what we've been able to do with the budget available to achieve targets of the annual performance plan. We outline this as follows. Um, we have been uh, able for this quarter to achieve 100% in all of our programs. We had 20 targets and we achieved all of them. If we give a breakdown or compare quarter by quarters, you will see that in the previous quarter of 2021, we had four out of 20 targets not achieved. This year, zero targets not achieved. If we then move to look at this performance overview per program at a glance, you will realize that program one had three targets. That is number of visible, percentage of invoices paid within 30 days, as well as a, fund, a constitution of the boards. And all of these were achieved. Program two, that was the issue of the number of athletes supported by sport academies, number of people actively participating in organized sport and active recreation, and the number of sport and recreation campaigns and events implemented, as well as the issue of the number of learners participating in at the district school sport tournaments 
a number of municipalities provided with technical or management okay. support. All of them achieved. If we look at program three, they had a percentage of official documents received that are translated were always 200%. But also number of international engagements coordinated, number of moral regeneration projects supported by government, number of community conversations, as well as a number of advocacy platforms on social cohesion implemented by the social cohesion advocates, the number of national days celebrations held, and the number of projects in the creative industry supported from the golden economy, all of which have been achieved. If we then look at the number of public awareness program for the issue of a number of awareness activations on the hashtag on the flag campaign, as well as the number of flags provided to schools, number of workshops hosted to advance knowledge on national symbols, the number of records digitized, as well as libraries financially supported, which were achieved. Now, if we look at the program specific, um, and we have outlined earlier that um, we were able to achieve targets. All of the branches were able to have 100% achievement. Going, breaking down program by program, um, Ms. Endima, can I request that you take over? Um, as I indicated, that uh, I don't seem to be succeeding to get this uh, flow updating, but I think you can be able to handle this. Did you Please, Chair Thank person. you, thank you, DJ. Yes, I've, I've, uh... I've been following your DJ. Um, you have just uh, instructed me to now go uh, branch by branch, which I'm going to do. Um, I will be going straight to uh, slide 14, which then talks to, uh, which begins with program one. <clears throat> and as uh, honorable members of the committee can then see that uh, in that slide, uh, most of those targets are not for reporting, which is about the intense and gold. Uh, they prioritize minor services modernized. Um, also, the next slide, which is uh, slide 15, number of sport awareness campaigns um, activated to profile the work of the department is not for reporting. But when you come to number of fees and visa held, <clears throat> which was uh, uh, the, the, the target for this uh, quarter was three. And I'm glad to report that there were five is in visa held <clears throat> and the two additional is in visa were held as a result of special requests from the sector. And then you go to percentage of invoices paid within 30 days, um, 100% here. And the, the, those uh, 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 invoices were paid within 30 days, and uh, the information is actually well outlined there. And then percentage of uh, councils or boards that are fully constituted. Also, it's gladdening to report that 100% council boards were fully constituted. Uh, we're saying here yeah, that uh, during uh, only one council or board, Robben Island Museum was due for rec reconstitution in the first quarter and their board or council was appointed. Then moving to program two, I'm not gonna be rehashing what the DG has said with regards to what this particular program is all about, because it has been said even in the previous uh, presentation, but just going straight to the um, uh, 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 performance uh, targets, uh, as, as members can see that uh, if we look at the number of athletes uh, supported the scientific support program per year, that's not for reporting and we go straight to the number of athletes supported by the sports academies and we can see uh, tremendous uh, improvement there because you are looking at the target which was 500 and that was exceeded. Um, in the sense that you have 1,151 athletes that were supported by the academies 
And the explanation is given, of course, uh, that the academic programs in the provinces render support and services to athletes based on their needs. Therefore, time and again, academies find themselves having to support either individual athletes or teams preparing for one event or the other. Then we look at uh, slide number 21, where also it's not for reporting. Maybe let me uh, spare some time there. Uh, uh, 22, number of people actively participating in organized sport and active recreation events. Here you're looking at uh, the target of 45,000, which was far exceeded if you look at the number of 84,350 seats. And I think this can be explained in terms of the uh, lifting of the state of disaster uh, that uh, now uh, the country is free to participate in these sports. And then looking at the number of sport and recreation promotion campaigns and events implemented, uh, it was one, that's the target was one, and uh, this was done uh, in the form of Move for Health commemorate, Commemorative Day, which took place in Wazulu Natal province at Umzinati district on the 31st of May, 2022. This one in, 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 in slide 24, uh, it's not for reporting. And the next one as well, uh, slide 25, it's not for reporting. And I go straight now to slide 26, which is about number of learners participating in the district school sport tournaments. Here, the target was 10,000, and you can see how far it was also exceeded because you have got 61,576 learners participating in the district school sport tournaments. Coming also to the number of municipalities provided with technical and all management support during construction, here, the target was 50. As you can see, it was also exceeded because you have got 60 municipalities provided with technical or management or support during construction. Here, the reason for this deviation is that there were engagements with and support provided to municipalities that applied to funding for the 2023-2024 financial year. These municipalities were then added to the 50 originally planned. And then the next slide is 27. Also, it is not for reporting. And then 28 uh, a slide is not for reporting. Uh, that takes me straight to program three, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Similarly, I will not be talking to the things that the DG might have spoken to as he was presenting the fourth quarter report. I'll just straight go to the uh, uh, slide 34. Uh, where you will see that uh, when, when it comes to number of multi-human language technology projects, that was not for reporting, which then takes me straight to percentage of official documents received that are translated or edited. It's 100% of official documents received that were translated. And we are talking about the number of 285 uh, documents. Then um, the, the next slide, 35, um, the, these two targets are not for reporting, same as 36, uh, as well as 37. It takes me now to a number of international engagements coordinated. There were six uh, international engagements that have to be coordinated, and they were all achieved, and they are listed uh, in both slide 38 and uh, slide uh, uh, 39. Then uh, going to number of moral regeneration projects supported by government. Um, there were four, and, um, and, and then they are listed there. Four moral regeneration projects were supported by government, which were focusing on the Charter of Positive Values, Ethical Leadership, Youthman, GPVF, and Femicide. Youthman, Dialogue. Number of community, then I go to 41. Number of community conversations, dialogues implemented to foster social interaction per year. The target was five, and we were able to do those five. One dialogue, uh, University of Free State, uh, Africa Man Dialogue, Youth Man Dialogue, Second UFS Community Intervention, Mahikan Community Youth. Dialogue. So they were all uh, done. 
Number of advocacy platforms on social cohesion implemented by social cohesion advocates, about five, uh, that's uh, the target of five, but also it's gladdening to report uh, 21 social cohesion advocacy platforms being implemented by social cohesion advocates. And I think it's very important that we then explain the overachievement which is due to department social cohesion advocates responding to the minister's call to step up their efforts and strategically engaging like-minded organization as a strategy to address the prevalence of myriad of challenges that negatively affect social cohesion. These include fight against racism, fight against gender-based violence and femicide, and also fight against assault on individuals with activism, bullying in schools, and incidents of attacks on foreign nationals. So these are the things that these social cohesion advocates were engaged in, hence the number uh, that we, we are seeing here. And then we go to um, ACPD 3, uh, I mean 13, those two are not for reporting, so I'll, I'll spare you some time, uh, uh, Chairperson. Then it takes me through to a number of uh, national days uh, uh, celebrated. There were two national days that needed to be celebrated within this quarter, and indeed they were celebrated. The Freedom Day in Bumalanga province, the Youth Day in the Eastern Cape province. Then I go to slide uh, 46, number of projects in the creative industry supported through the Mzansi Golden Economy. Here the target was nine, and indeed, nine African man projects uh, with completed evidence for completeness of reporting and to align with budget expense, 10 additional African man projects were partially supported. This will be checked in the coming quarter. So with uh, getting more evidence on these uh, projects, we could have even had more numbers uh, here. Then coming to uh, uh, slide number 47, it's not for reporting, both of those targets, so is uh, 48. And this brings us to an end of uh, program three. It takes me straight to program four, and I'll do the same, uh, Chairperson, and go straight to uh, targets. As we can see that the first target was not for reporting, and the second tar target was not for reporting. But the number of public awareness activations on the I Am The Flag campaign uh, there were six uh, that were part of the target and six public awareness activations on I am the flag were indeed implemented. And then the number of flags to be provided to schools, we had set the target of 30, but we were able to do 33. Uh, that was due to partnership with the Eastern Cape Young Patriots program in the CDC area, um, which then led to this overachievement. Then the number of workshops hosted uh, to advance knowledge of national symbols. We had uh, set the target of two for the quarter, but we did three workshops. And the additional workshop was as a result of requests from the Department of Education for a, a flat bearers workshop. And then the, the slide 53, as you can see, on our chat and other members, the, uh, the, it's not for reporting. And then we come to a number of records digitized, as you can see that uh, during this quarter, 37 uh, prison child data belts and uh, 22 uh, TRC audio tapes were supposed to be uh, digitized, and we were able to exceed that by far, thanks to the P uh, PESP interns uh, who have actually helped us to increase the numbers and uh, additional equipment provided also uh, which was received through the test then the number of libraries financially supported per year 29 and uh, of course all 29 new and modular libraries were financially supported and then the next target which was the gazetting uh, on standardized geographical names uh, is what was not for reporting. This brings uh, uh, this presentation to an end, Chairperson, uh, 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 from the content point of view. And then I will therefore request to yourself, Chairperson, uh, that 
we allow the CFO to then take us through the financial performance report. Thank you. Well, th thanks, uh, Chairperson, Honorable Chair. Uh, I'll present the next page report uh, for the first quarter. Uh, next slide. <coughs> And the overall spending is at around uh, 1.1 billion, uh, which is 16.2 percent against the budget of 6.3 billion. Uh, the department projected uh, to spend 1.4 uh, billion, which is 22 percent, and then uh, the underspending is, is about 6.6 uh, percent. And then the overall and under expenditure against project I explain as follows: uh, composition of employees uh, we are sitting at 22. 0.6% against 25%. Next slide. Uh, goods and services, uh, we projected to spend uh, 152. Uh, uh, we spent uh, 136, uh, uh, which is the, the reason being the one that I've already explained the issue of the treasury uh, exemption issue. Uh, next slide. Uh, provinces and municipalities. Uh, uh, the, the transfer to to provinces was done for for mass participation conditional grant. Uh, that one was in target, and then uh, uh, there was uh, the other one for sports uh, grant that could not be uh, transferred because of the provinces uh, finalized their business plan late. Uh, but it was done in July. Uh, next slide. Uh, on the departmental agency and accounts, uh, the, the spend is 487 million. Uh, the, the projected uh, expenditure was 566, which is 26%. And then there is a 6% of uh, that under expenditure. And uh, one of the things delay we experienced with the process of transfer performing as institution for the implementation of incubator program. And the transfer to entities implementing phase three, uh, PSP, could not be made as a result of the condition that was set uh, uh, by the National Treasury in terms to say all the, the, the approval must be granted before the creation of the code can be done on the system. Next slide. Uh, departmental agencies on capital. Uh, the spend is about 26 million, which is 13 percent against the, and the, the projected of 22. And those are the reasons why we, we have uh, underspent. Uh, South African Library for Blind, the contractor, progress on site is slow, and the intervention is undertaken to fast track the, ex, the, the expenditure. And also the turnaround strategy has been set up to make sure that uh, as we move towards the end of the second quarter, we catch up. Uh, next slide. Higher education uh, institution current, uh, the expenditure is 1.7 million, which is 18%. And then uh, the, the under expenditure is about 3.1 million. And the reason that is because of the MOU between the non compliance of Stellenbosch that happened on the previous financial year. Next slide. Uh, public cooperation and private enterprise, uh, the expenditure is uh, at uh, 18.4 million uh, against the projected of the about 30 million. And then we've got about 12 million that against the projection. And uh, the, the, the reason of the division from the first quarter approval project is owed to a fewer submission of expenditure report that was anticip anticipated by M MGE beneficiary in order to facilitate the second tranche transfer. And next slide. A non-profit institution current, uh, the expenditure is around 25.5 million, which is 7% uh, against the target of uh, 29. Uh, uh, the one of the reasons there is that the first tranche to, to the left line could not be made or into the prior year uh, and spend fund and submission of expenditure report. So we can't be paying the amount if they have not complied fully in terms of the previous financial year. Next slide. And next slide. 
machinery and equipment, uh, the expenditure there we have spent 56,000 uh, uh, against the 12 million. And the, the reason for that is that uh, one of the things is that uh, treasury uh, exemptions uh, that affected us negative for the first quarter. Next slide. A heritage uh, asset, uh, uh, the, the, expen the, uh, the expenditure is zero. And then the target was about 8 million, uh, which led to underspending against the projection. Next slide. Uh, administration uh, budget, uh, we have spent uh, 30%, and then which is an over expenditure of uh, about uh, 5.0.7. And then the recreation and development and sport, uh, 4.3 uh, of that DORA uh, transfer payment that was made in, in July. And then as and culture issue of the M MGE and then heritage and promotion, uh, the issue there is 20.2%, uh, uh, which is about uh, less than 5% under expenditure, which more come from the composition of employees. On the departmental level, we are sitting at the 16.2% against the budget of uh, 6 billion. Uh, economic classification, uh, composition of employees, uh, we are spending by three, and then uh, goods and services 21.4, which is about uh, 3.6. And then that is as, as a result of the treasury exemption issue. Next slide. Uh, transfer payment, uh, we are sitting at 15.7. That will be transferred to municipality to public entities. On general, uh, we have about 10% uh, uh, on expenditure. Uh, that has already been explained. Next slide. Uh, payment of the capital asset. Uh, we anticipated that uh, uh, most of this, uh, because the treasury exemption has been now lifted, then we can able to spend. So the catch up will happen more between the second quarter and the third quarter. Next. Uh, I'll end there, Chair. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, TG and the, and the, the staff of the department. Let me, let me now go back to our hands. Honorable members, uh, we had all the presentations. So now this is the time that uh, honorable members must engage with the, the uh, presentations. Now, uh, uh, Honorable Martin Gossi, Honorable Denise, Honorable Adams, Honorable Maloman, Honorable Sondi, Honorable Van Vake, in that order. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, let me again <clears throat> apologize for not uh, uh, appearing. Uh, and once again, let me. Uh, you know, uh, welcome the, the, the presentation one more time. Now, Chairperson, my question, the first one is, uh, how does the department measure its success in the rural areas pertaining to the development of, of uh, you know, the sports, arts and culture? Uh, to, from the poor black areas <clears throat> where uh, the poor of the poor are almost 100% 100 black, uh, has the department uh, collected a scientific proof that that supports the presentation? So that is, is more like adding on, on, on the very first question. Uh, what is the department uh, meaning by artists placed in schools? Uh, I'm not quite sure of that. Uh, Chairperson, <clears throat> excuse me, is the, is the social cohesion vision working? Uh, with, with all these racial explosions that are erupting in these schools that are white kids dominated, how does the department weigh its success uh, of social cohesion? Um, what happens to projects that take more than five years to complete? Uh, who is to blame for the money wasted thereafter? 
Uh, Chairperson, um, the question that I have is, what is the kind of first case and many project entailing? Uh, this understanding, Chairperson, of the department <clears throat> seem to be the core results of why the development is lacking in the majority of, of South Africans. And when will the National Arts Council and Fredinia Teller problems be fully resolved by the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture? Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Mashingosi, Honorable Moloman. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, my apology, I've got a network challenge. I don't know even now whether it will kick me out or not. Greetings to everyone. Let me also welcome the presentation. Uh, my first question, it will be based on the quarter, the first quarter, uh, noting that the department has overachieved on, uh, on the number of athletes supported by the sports academies and the number of people actively participating in the organized sports and active creation events and the number of learners participating at the district school sports tournaments is the annual target low and how does the department project is its quarterly target and is it linked to the budgeting the other one i just want to speak about the issue of the overall spending of the department reflects underspending in various aspects which reflect the poor planning and implementation by the department and its entities. What mechanism is the department implementing to improve planning, performance, and monitoring? The other one is the issue of the department and the quarter. Let me go to the fourth quarter now. Noting the delays with the commencement of the project on the development of the South African geographical name system due to tax clearance issues from the supplier side. How did the department supply chain consider and appoint a supplier with, without a valid tax clearance? And the other issue is that the department on their active and their corrective action, they've promised that it will be implemented on the first quarter, but I don't see it in the first quarter. Maybe they will explain if what are the challenges that they are experiencing. The other matter, it will be on the issue of construction facilities is a crucial driver of increasing participation in sports and infrastructure development has an economic multiply effect as a critical component of the economic reconstruction and recovery plan. What are the additions made in the contract that required a break in service by the service provider in the three sites? And what has happened to the budget allocation for the project in the previous financial year as the project is planned for completion in the first quarter and of 2022? What happened to the fourth site which was not delivered? The other question, it will be the nation building is one of the critical pillars of creating a national democratic society, which is the NDS, and continuous dialogue. Just ish, yo, my God. And the continuous dialogue of it. So I just want to, to check on the department to say, because the NDS is a very critical issue when we check on our 2030 plan, I just want to check who to say in the implementation of the initiative for social cohesion and national bidding, what are the costs involved in dialogues to foster social cohesion? And why didn't the department overachieve by implementing the five projects? The other one, which it will be the last one, the department has an evident weakness in and implementing programs such as Mzansi Golden Economy, which is an important project, noting the precarious state of artists, citing the department's experience during the pandemic. What lessons have they have been learned to improve the processing of the application to avoid underspending? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Malumani. The next Honorable Member is Honorable Denise. 
Thank you, Chairperson, and thank you for the um, for the presentations. Um, <clears throat> I just want to start off with the fourth quarter by making a comment that the spend expenditure was on ninety eight percent. So there was a two percent shortfall, but overall it was um, it was a very good ending for the department under five point six three um, billion rand. The amount underspent one hundred and fifteen million point nine million. Um, obviously, as the um, department explained, um, I would just like to ask a few questions, um, Chairperson. Uh, first of all, the green program, uh, the program one or the program related to the vacant post, I would I would like to ask um, uh, these vacant posts, um, what percentage of it is 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 critical or scarce skills, um, you know, and and is is the department also busy with a restructuring? Um, organizational restructuring dealing with these vacant posts, or is it two, or is it two separate issues? And then I would like to know. Um, there was a comment made on on the on the. I think there was there's a, de um, a delay in the service delivery in, in program one. I would like to, in a service provider uh, uh, delayed the 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 work. So I would like to know what what was the actual work. Um, no, and and well, that, that was that, that that the service the provider could not could not deliver on. A chairperson, I would like to um, also ask on program four that the heritage promotion, although it's a small percentage, not point two underspend, but it's that points to fifty seven million. As the previous member have, have raised the point about um, uh, um, about heritage, so my question is, um, I noted that. Um, there was money transfer variant were taking place from program two to program three and four, and it includes, uh, for example, the RIM in the Roman Island Museum uh, and other NSLA that in that is in financial distress. So um, I think the question I want to ask here is what is the position of these um, organizations now that going forward that is still in financial distress. I think uh, we can get a, uh, a maybe a report on these organizations um, uh, uh, referred to that is in financial uh, distress that the 57 million, 57 million was transferred to. Um, on the non-financial performance, um, um, Chairperson, I just would like to to get feedback on the, and on the indications from the from these schools um, to improve on sports um, participation. So what I noticed that the department reports, you know, on um, on why they couldn't um, complete their programs, for example, on national school sports. Um, but maybe it is good to hear from the department what is the issues at at the at the schools or at the organisations that must participate in this mess. Um, uh, school sports participation. Um, then I also would like to know um, on the on the arts and culture promotion. Um, there were there were three targets not met out of twenty in the last quarter, and I just need clarity on 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 why that, uh, they couldn't meet it because I don't see a reason um, why because technology technology is there. So my question is, was it was or did the department fail to plan the, the 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 conversation and dialogues to foster social interaction, or was it planned but they couldn't um, have the events? Um, I just need clarity clarity on that, please. And then the relationship with the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure, and the department also raised the the Sarki Bartman. Um, our budgeted Sarki Bartman in, in April, incomplete project over seven years, 143 million spent there. So my question to the department is, and I've noted there was a comment made on, on joint responsibility, but so my question is, did the department budget any uh, money for this financial year? Although I hear also there should be a memorandum of understanding. But um, is there a budget allocation to complete this project? Because this is a very important project that is a bit of an embarrassment uh, at the moment um, for the department, but more for public works who is creating this embarrassment for for, for our department. 
Um, Chairperson, I just wanted to um, uh, ask the, the, the last question on this um, fourth quarter. Um, how many boards uh, exist in the department and how many boards um, that, that, that was referred to um, um, was dealt with in the last quarter? Um, that were constituted. So I just wanted that that um, that difference between the national amount of boards and how many, and also the first quarter that came up as well. So also we need to know how many was constituted in, in the first quarter. Um, in terms of the um, first quarter, um, Chairperson, I've got just two questions. Um, on the program of the Imbizo, I would uh, I first want to say that I welcome the report on the first quarter, and it's always difficult to to have a um, a good report while this department has now a good report on the first quarter because it always depends on tenders and service providers and non-compliance as we have heard. But I think I support the mandate of the department for social integration through sports, arts, and culture, and I think we. We have to remind ourselves continuously what that mandate is to to stay focused. But on the questions, I would just like to ask on the Impiso, um, um the thirty day, uh, not the, the uh, not the, the targets. Um, uh, as was said, all achieved. But I just wanted to know, um, and I think I've raised the question on the boards. It was constituted. How many boards um, did the department have to deal with in the first term? And then uh, the, just repeating that question on the rim, um, the board itself, uh, I just need some explanation. I couldn't pick up what the gentleman was saying on, on the rim, on the board in program uh, in program one as, as a target. And my last point, Chairperson, is um, um, I want to know if the department, uh, it's not necessarily directly they link, uh, linked to, to, to the presentations, but, I but it was, I think linked to your opening statement, Chairperson. If the department or the minister um, accompanied the, our sportsmen to Birmingham and and also to the Banyana Games or the finals, so just would like to know and when are we going to invite Banyana, Ban, sorry Banyana to um, to come to to Parliament to celebrate with him. Um, thank you, Chairperson. That is um, my my questions for now. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Dennis. The next Honorable uh, member mm -hmm. uh, uh, is Honorable Adams. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, allow me to switch off my camera because I'm not fully feeling well. Okay. Chairperson, I will start with the fourth quarter uh, report, annual report. My question, what consequence will management take on inadequate evidence to support the reported achievement as this reflects poor monitoring system and non-compliance on reporting or activities that did not occur as no valid evidence exists? Which 11 federations are failing to meet 50% of the prescribed charter transformation target. What are the system systemic challenges impacting the achievement of the target? And how can the challenge be addressed to create inclusive sports? The other question, what were contractual related challenges between DSEC and the implementing agent on the Dr. John L. Dube House project, and which party was the cause of the delay? And there's some question um, that is still on quarter four. Underspending on compensation reflects a lack of inadequate uh, employees per the department's organ organogram. What is the impact of vacancies in the delivery of projects? And chairperson on quarter one, I've got a question there, noting that the department has overachieved 
on the number of athletes supported by the sport academies and the number of people actively participating in organizing organized sport and uh, active recreation events and the number of learners participating at the district school sports tournament in the annual target of low and how does the department project its quarterly targets and is it linked to budget and then chairperson uh, it's my last question um, on the 60 municipalities provided with technical and management support during construction that achieved the annual target what further support will be provided for the remainder of the financial year to ensure the 60 projects are implemented within the timeline i thank you chairperson <coughs> Thank you, Honorable um, Adams. Uh, the next uh, Honorable Member, Honorable Sondi. Did I call Honorable Maloman? Yes, sir. Yes, okay, honor sir. okay, Honorable Sondi. Thank you, uh, Chairperson. Yes, Bully is away department. Yes, Bully is away to Bonke. <clears throat> e presentation in Mogelegi, the chair, and Jango Boza go to Sebeshil and Kaulengua Hotagi. Chair, the first question from my side is What were the contributing factors to people actively in organized sport and active recreation? And how is the department encouraging other active recreational activities which require fewer facilities in the fourth quarter? which is the beginning of 22, of 2022, when restrictions have been eased. Uh, the first question, Chair, is on the fourth quarter report, um, uh, on, the fourth, on, on the first presentation on the fourth quarter report. Uh, then the second question also uh, is still on the fourth quarter report. Uh, the second question, what is the challenge in the Sarapatman Center of Remembrance that no activities have been undertaken, Chair? What caused a contractual challenge? Because the Ngama challenges with regards to the contracts. <clears throat> this third one, Chair, uh, on the fourth quarter report, it with regards to <clears throat> the on the on the on 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 on, on Professor Pichigantuli <clears throat> is what was the basis of the treasury to decline the, to procure the sculpture from Professor Ntuli and why did the department require a deviation. Uh, Chair, uh, the last one on the fourth quarter report, if the multi-year infrastructure projects are delayed, what are the implications or effects on the budget and other planned infrastructure projects of the outer year? And the, 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 that was the last one on the fourth quarter uh, report. On the on the first quarter report, Chair, I've got one uh, a, 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 a question. Noting the increased capacity to digitize records, what is the new target for the treason trial, data pad, and the TRC audio tapes? Yeah, Bulena Kulu Stalo, but one uh, comment to say, Chair, the presentation, both presentations are, 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 are welcome, Chair, but yeah. the under expenditure, Chair, is not welcome. Thank you, Honorable Sundi. The, the next Honorable Member is Honorable Veronica. Thank you, Chairperson, and thank you also for the, for the presentation. 
Um, my questions are on the uh, quarter, first quarter report. Um, I want to know why has the department in the first quarter lowered the targets such as citizens' participation in sport and recreation per year, as well as the number of students being awarded with um, heritage bursaries? Um, and I want to know um, if the department can just differentiate between invisos and uh, community conversations. Um, are they representing the same thing or um, because there's separate indicators with separate targets for this? Um, and if um, it's the same, why is there duplication? And then program two, um, there's a, a huge underspending of 75% in program two. Um, and I want to... Brother Pulfer, we can't hear you. Honorable Veronica, you have got the talent network. As little as 62 million um, or 4.3 percent spent. Um, and I want to know the annual um, target for number of people act actively participating in organized sport and active recreation has been lower um, uh, year after year from three. Sorry, Honorable Veronica, we didn't hear you. You were cut, so it may you may not have answers in some of your questions. Your network was very bad. So you you okay. do have all, you, you, in writing. Yes, yes, but if, please now we do hear you. If you notice that there are questions which are not answered, you have right to do a follow-up or you must write. Continue. Thank you. Continue. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Um then I want to know if uh a sixty one thousand five hundred children, school children. Um, can participate at the strict uh, school sport tournaments um, in only the first quarter. Why is the annual report uh, or the annual target 75,000? Um, is this target not too low, given um, that there are over 12 million school children across 25,000 schools in South Africa? Um, and if they, we can also just have a reflection on how many of the participants were from townships and rural schools. Um, can the department broadly, under program four, three, um, broadly outline what research projects the South African Cultural Observatory are currently undertaking as the organization will submit 16 reports by the end of the fourth quarter for 2022 and 23? And then I also, the last question, um, Love Life is currently having constant uh, challenges in terms of poor business planning, non-spending of funds, delay in allocation from the department, what are the reasons for the challenges at Love Life that uh, continue to persist on an annual uh, basis? Is there any consequence management uh, taking place? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable uh, Veronica. Honorable uh, Mama Bulo. Yeah, thanks. At least now I got a, a, a proper, what to call it, a proper place so that I can connect. Jim, uh, even though the other questions were taken by other members with regard to federations, I'm worried. Federations versus transformation target um, and, and vice versa. Uh, because remember, I raised a point earlier to say no. Even during the Commonwealth Games, we saw the, the cricket, the ladies' team there. It was a white only affair. I was not impressed personally, Honorable uh, Chair, uh, because we have capable young women here in the country. What could have been the reason why they could not uh, meet the target and so on? The other issue, is, uh, Mr. Gatu, the, the Mengokini project, how much was budgeted there? Uh, because they're the, 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 the only saying no, it was not, um, the target was not reached, but how much was the budget there? The issue, uh, the DG also touched on the issue of geographical names, but he did not um, 
um, elaborate much on it. Remember, I'm a former member of this committee, DG. <laughs> I used to be a former member of the Games uh, Committee, Limpopo, and also at National. What is happening? How many names did we manage to um, to change the last financial year, and how many are we targeting the next financial year? The last one will be on the community as development program. I asked about uh, the issue of Free State and Western Cape. What happened? Why are, um, did they not uh, meet the target? But also, Chair, maybe a, um, a general question for them not to meet uh, the targets. What could be the um, a serious problem for the department not to meet targets? Besides COVID and other things, what could be a serious problem? Because these things, Honorable Chair, are related also to issues of service delivery. You know, people are insulting us. Um, they're on the ground. Really, now you're focusing on wrong things, blah, blah, blah. Can the, can the, can the department just tell us why are they not achieving the targets? It's worrying when they're not uh, achieving targets. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson Gallagher. Thank you, Honorable uh, Boy. Uh, may I ask uh, three questions from each uh, presentation? Thanking the pres both presentations. Uh, first question: uh, The coronavirus pandemic has exposed how vulnerable creative artists are. <coughs> now, the heritage legacy projects with exhibitions contribute to creating national consciousness <coughs> and our national identity and create opportunities for continent creators, content co creators. The outcome of this project reflects poor management reflected by an inadequate portfolio of evidence of project and an efficiency procurement process. What is the department doing to strengthen its administration and what consequence is management undertaken for poor performance. Uh, also, DG and, the, and the, your colleagues, why was the CAFAS and, and the um, Semenya Foundation project not paid on time? And why did the, the treasurer reject reclassifying the amount for younger arts development, resulting in underspending. Uh, the, the, the other question in this program for the, this under expenditure uh, on machinery and equipment is relatively material, reflecting poor contract and financial management. Has this resulted in funds not being spent? How does this department manage service providers who do not meet their contractual terms? And did the department prioritize the, this uh, 16.4 million and of what purpose? Uh, maybe uh, our, our oversight role, uh, I'm not sure whether it can be extended that we must call uh, now these entities uh, if maybe uh, the, the department cannot uh, provide us with the answers, what did they say to the department uh, now because our role is to do oversight and now we are doing the oversight to the department and this understanding, uh, it's, it's, it's a majority of entities that are, are not spending. So uh, maybe honorable members, we need to check whether can't we call those people together with the department, uh, provided that the department is promising to tell us um, where are they and what they've done to those underspending of uh, funds. And then, uh, on the, this another program one, uh, this, is, uh, this is my question is about the, the community libraries and mass participation conditional grants 
what is major weakness in provinces in the finalization of business plans? And how is the department supporting areas to develop business plans? The second question on program one, how does the department monitor implementation of the community uh, libraries, mass participation grants to ensure the grants are spent efficiently for their purpose? Uh, maybe uh, our monitoring tools, do we think that are, are sharp? And, and I'm suspecting uh, this thing of compliance in one other presentation when you did come and you complain about it. But uh, even the AG uh, did uh, uh, reflect on it. Uh, the only thing that would love to, to understand, uh, do you want assistance from a committee in order that those people who not comply, can we call them? Uh, uh, in our uh, spare time, whilst our program are too tight, but this is this is uh, not on because all your understanding, understanding this one didn't comply that one. What are your monitoring tools? And if they are not uh, adhered to, uh, what do you think that you must do? So far, thank you so much. Uh, DG and the, the, the department at large, uh, we have so much questions. It was a very interesting uh, day today because we combined two uh, reports, quarter four and quarter one, and we needed uh, to be like this today. DG. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, did she? Any other person who's on the platform? Uh, did she? Sometimes you must go and take medication. I'm suspecting. I'm even sweating myself. Any other leader who's on the platform uh, to break the ice? You are working as a collective. Let's not have this Thanks. silence. Thanks, uh, Chairperson and uh, honorable members. I, I am breaking the ice because I'm responsible for program one. Yes. So I thought, let me lead, and then my colleagues, program two, three, four will follow. Yes. Um, and I, I am picking um, uh, on uh, questions and comments that have related to program one in what has been uh, so far uh, asked. And I would like to start uh, on the question um, on, uh, maybe let me just say, the, the first question, uh, apologies to Mr. Matlingozi, our uh, honorable member. I lost your wave, so I hope there was nothing on program one on, on that set of questions. Mandy, my, Mandy, my colleagues will assist me. Just a moment. Uh, we, I'm not calling the minister uh, because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in the view that minister was, is going to round up at the end of this discussion. I thank you, Mandy. Thanks, and that's why I also stepped in. I was uh, under that uh, line of thinking. Uh, and then, Honorable uh, Maluman, you had a question in terms of uh, what has not been achieved uh, in relation to the dialogues. Uh, I must uh, first indicate that uh, in terms of the annual targets, for the uh, community conversations, uh, which talks to those dialogues, we have achieved our annual target. Uh, quota four, uh, because on quota three, we had much uh, to, 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 to do. Uh, one specific month that becomes a very busy month in government in terms of uh, different things that are recognized is September. And we found ourselves being invited by our peer departments to participate in their initiatives uh, where they were trying to do what we are asking them to do 
to mainstream some of the things that we put on our uh, community conversation. If I make an example, uh, issues of the GPVF, uh, which uh, form part of our community conversations. Um, so um, that uh, which was achieved in September, it also impacted on the budget for this program. So in December, December also known to be a slow month uh, with the month of December and half of January, um, we were not uh, foreseeing that we will have a serious problem in terms of us uh, being audited because we tried to explain that uh, actually the money that was the budget for this program, we had already kind of uh, spent it through the work that has been done in September, but uh, a, a target sitting for the quarter uh, and versus what was uh, reported, it still showed us as having underspent. Had we known perhaps uh, that we will fall into that uh, situation, perhaps we would have gone to other partners and uh, they assist us in uh, paying for what we could have led in terms of planning for the dialogues, but working with another partner that may have funds. Um, and then um, the other question was uh, the question on a critical post that was coming, I think, from Honorable uh, Member uh, Adams. I, I must say that our critical posts uh, have been greatly in the area of our SMS uh, posts. And I can be quick to respond to say, um, to demonstrate what we have done in terms of this range of posts. Uh, as of September um, 2021, we, we were at a range of 25% vacancy, just taking stock of what we had regarded as critical posts, but uh, taking stock of the SMS uh, positions in total where most of our critical posts were. And by the time we uh, came to year end, uh, not necessarily, uh, uh, talking uh, quarter four, as members would also see in our report, annual report that we are preparing, we, we ended up with 12.3% with a, a as we uh, finished the year. Um, all the post uh, finance, uh, CFO, uh, internal audit, um, uh, and, and other HR uh, positions, senior positions, we had filled them. Um, and then in terms of the boards that have been constituted um, between uh, the last, the third quarter, because the question was also asking until uh, now, um, first quarter of, of this uh, year, we had about uh, eight years, uh, um, the boards or councils that had to be reconstituted in that period. To mention them, Izigo Titsong, Sarah, Robin Island, Nelson, Nelson Mandela Bay Theatre Complex, South African Library for the Blind, as well as Nelson Mandela Museum, and lastly, the South African Institute for Drug Free Sport. All of those, um, only three uh, are still pending um, based on the timing of when uh, the period uh, of office for the current members of the council comes to an end. And the three that are remaining is um, uh, the South African Library for the Blind, um, the drug, uh, the South African Drug uh, or Institute for Drug Free Sport, as well as a Nelson Mandela Museum in Amtata. Um, but we are we are already in a process of interviews uh, for for all of them. Um, and then um, the other question from Member Adams, uh, the wave uh, broke a bit. Uh, it was on consequent management on those that are not performing. I hope I got that question right because I was just trying to put together words. Um, there is a process in government that guides what needs to be done. Uh, it's a process uh, that we are following. Um, it's a process that is 
uh, starting. I, I, I'm not sure this question was uh, speaking to us internally as the department or to the entities because I heard it later uh, speaking to entities, but if I'm responding to it, talking to us as the department, uh, it's where I have started to say there is a process that is starting with the um, uh, uh, reviews that are done uh, periodically, quarterly at a branch level, uh, every six months at an organizational or departmental level. And this process uh, takes with it a, a, a call for a performance improvement plan that has to be done and monitored for those that are not uh, well performing. But if again, through that series is uh, prescribed on what has to be done to manage the performance improvement plan, the official is still not uh, uh, coming uh, to the party, then one can institute a disciplinary process, which is uh, a disciplinary actions on poor performance. Uh, and that is the process through which uh, if it comes to that uh, a person can be managed out of the organization or department. And then the next question was, um, entities not spending uh, on, on their budgets. Um, of course, uh, we are providing an analysis uh, to the, the, the minister uh, periodically uh, on the performance of our entities. And we are having a forum uh, that uh, DG uh, is having with the entities, another forum where minister engages with the entities, but specifically where uh, there will be a discussion on budget specific matters. There is a forum of the our CFO with other CFOs in the entities. And of course, um, members would know that uh, we are always under pressure uh, uh, from our entities others needing money uh, when others are not spending money. So uh, depending on engagements we are having and reasons that we are receiving from them and the nature of projects that have not been implemented, for example, what I'm saying the nature, it could be that they have started the projects, but they are just slow in uh, uh, progressing to completion. And in that case, it becomes difficult for us to uh, take money from them. Uh, but uh, we are now having a discussion with CFO to say, uh, maybe we shall have to find a way by which uh, we can do um, posting of funds amongst our entities, if need be, when an entity is not uh, spending its money. Um, I think I have uh, covered all that was uh, relating to program one, uh, Madam Chair and honorable members. Thank you, Mandy. Any intake? Any member of um, the chair, chairperson? Yes. I don't know whether you will allow me to talk to program three. Uh, this is DDG Kumalo. Uh, I, um, I cannot allow anyone to talk. We can talk in any information that you want to share with us. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm struggling. Thank you very much, Chairperson. I'm struggling with my video, uh, Chair. I just wanted to show my face. Okay. Um, can I please oh. go ahead? Go ahead, uh, Dr. Kumani. Um, thank you very much, uh, Chair. Good morning. Uh, good afternoon to you um, and the honorable members and minister. I would respond to the questions that uh, spoke to the arts, culture, promotion, and development uh, space. <clears throat> Maybe just to uh, start off, uh, there was a question uh, on the artist in schools, uh, Chairperson, uh, where the honorable member was uh, wanting to know what, what is this, uh, what uh, wanting to understand what this program is about. This program um, basically responds uh, to a need that was identified um, in uh, liaison and consultation with the Department of Basic Education. I believe that uh, we are all aware of the fact that there are capacity constraints that are prevalent uh, amongst the majority of the creative arts teachers. Mm -hmm. Uh, who, where you find that in the schools, they've also been assigned other core areas like English, science, mathematics, etc. 
So the, the, this particular intervention then brings about not just the theoretical um, skill, but also the practical skills that are then impact, uh, imparted uh, to the, 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 the kids at the schools, the learners at the schools. And it basically focuses on four genres. Uh, which is music, dance, drama, and visual arts at the most um, honorable chair. However, you would find that um, this will then vary from school to school or from province to province um, in terms of some of, of the other interest areas um, that arise from that particular school. But basically, uh, we prescribe uh, those four main genres. And the implementation of this program is within the framework of the curriculum policy statement, which is referred to as CAPS by the Department of Basic Education, focusing on the area uh, of the creative arts subject um, area. So uh, the department, um, over and above, uh, just closing that particular uh, gap and providing that intervention, also uh, is able to achieve the, um, the issue of creation of job opportunities and employment, particularly targeting our young creatives. So it's mostly the young creatives um, that are um, placed in these different schools, a total of uh, 300 uh, throughout the country. And as indicated in the report, we did exceed um, that particular target uh, due to some of the cooperation that we found in the provinces and also the cooperation we found um, in schools. Um, uh, I hope that that responds to that. The next question also from the same uh, honorable member was wanting to understand what the KFAS Simenia project was about. Honorable Chair, this uh, KFAS Simenia uh, project is where the department has partnered uh, with the KFAS Simenia uh, <coughs> Foundation um, to provide support uh, to build a school uh, of African performing arts, focusing mainly uh, or teaching the students that participate uh, uh, in contemporary uh, dance and contemporary uh, music. This mainly is a kind of a project that is bridging a gap, uh, Honorable Chair, between the university and the school. Um, that's the target uh, group uh, in terms of um, the, the young people or the youth um, within the space of the cultural and creative industry. The construction um, at uh, the, the school has been completed um, and uh, to then take the program forward, um, it links up with what the, uh, my colleagues from the international relations were lay, earlier on reporting on in terms of the project that is being done in partnership with Cuba um, in line with the agreement that was presented by the DG at the beginning of the meeting, uh, Honorable Chair. So basically this project is part uh, of the uh, project uh, or categorized under, under the academies that the department uh, is supporting and uh, it is focusing on the training and capacity building within the creative sector. Then, uh, Honorable Chair, there was a question around the Mzansi Golden Economy, um, mainly talking and raising a concern with regard to the underspend uh, that we are experiencing uh, there. As presented uh, by the, 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 the um, CFO, um, Honorable Chairperson, uh, the department in the last financial year within this particular target uh, disbursed uh, more than 100 million uh, to the creatives uh, within the industry uh, based on their submissions. However, maybe I need to just uh, quickly hasten to say uh, that um, this particular target um, in the APP that was presented does not only cover the open call, 
much as the fourth quarter, we were report, reporting only on the fourth, uh, on the open call, uh, as it is uh, the area that is covered in the fourth quarter. However, I wanted just to explain that the, this target, the MGE uh, support, also covers other projects or interventions or programs that we do, which is the area of the national flagships uh, for which we did uh, support about six in the last financial year, the provincial flagships uh, for which we also did support uh, close to 10, uh, which is the provincial flagships as identified by the provinces. However, what then happens is that uh, when, when I just focus on the open call uh, chairperson, which is the fourth quarter reporting, what happens is that when beneficiaries are paid, they are not paid the total amount from the onset. Uh, we pay the first tranche and then the second tranche. The first tranche, which goes to a tune of about 90% of the total grant allocation. Only when they submit uh, the narrative reports, the expenditure reports, and all the compliance, the, the reports that are in line with the MOAs that have they've signed with the department, do we be, then pay the second tranche. The second tranche, which comes to about 10% of the total grant allocation. <laughs> So what we were reporting on here, uh, Honorable Chair, was basically that um, the majority, um, the report indicates that uh, we, pay, we paid a, a total of about 201 um, beneficiaries. However, there were those that at the time of reporting had not uh, submitted all those documents that indicate um, the full um, implementation of the project as per the proposal that was approved, which is why we then withheld that 10%, which is second tranche, up until that payment, um, I mean, those reports have um, sufficiently been submitted. And it then translated to that reflected under expenditure, where we had then to write to the accounting officer to ask for approval of these projects then being rolled over into the new financial year. So basically, Jay, um, we, we, the, 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 pen, the penalty uh, that is paid here is the fact that we don't necessarily pay the second tranche un until the, 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 the beneficiary has met all the requirements. The next. The next um, area, uh, Chairperson, if, if I can actually go on, um, is uh, the area around how we are uh, dealing with the issue of the community centers, as raised also by um, the, uh, the honorable member. At the end um, of, the, of, of March, we, we had um, all the provinces, all nine provinces, had implemented the community art center development program. However, when we, 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 we then look and do an analysis of the reports that they, they, they report, there are things that we then pick up that are not aligned to the required portfolio of evidence. In the case of Free State, as the Honorable Member had asked, Free State had changed um, their implementing agent about twice during the financial year which then delayed their project um, and, and the transfer of budget to them. So the, the time that they then spent on implementation, while it allowed them to implement all the projects as depicted in the business plan that they had submitted to us. However, the, the auditors then picked up an aspect related to the implementing agent where full compliance documents were not meeting the requirements. I need to indicate, Honorable Chair, that subsequent to that, Free State did provide us with a full portfolio of evidence, which as a result cleared, because they had, as I said, implemented uh, all the projects in line with their business plan. However, it was the, the compliance documents that then um, made this um, to be categorized as not achieved. The story is a bit different when it comes to Western Cape.
Western Cape um, um, indicated to us that they wanted to go through a comprehensive consultation process, which took a while uh, to finalize. Hence, at the end of fourth quarter, they had not finalized the implementation of their projects uh, for community centers, which then as a result led to the annual achievement. Members would see um, later on when the annual report is tabled that Western Cape is one of those uh, provinces which even after the finalization of the process had not had not uh, finished uh, the implementation. There is um, a control measure that is put in place by the department, uh, which includes um, the issue of not transferring new money up until we are satisfied with the mitigating uh, measures together with the new plans that they put in place. Western Cape, together with all the other provinces, uh, to date, Chairperson, I can report that all um, eight, nine provinces have submitted to us three-year business plans, which is the direction that we are now taking, Jay, so that we are, we, we are not delayed by administrative processes. Um, all provinces to date have submitted uh, for 2022-23 their three-year business plans, and they've been given their grant allocation letters indicative of uh, the amount of budget uh, for the community art center development in their space. And we would be signing um, uh, MOAs uh, over the period of three years also, uh, so that the implementation can happen as soon as the financial year commences. Um, the, the, the Kaifa Simenya um, matter, uh, Honorable Chair, um, the payment uh, was not finalized because there were certain um, reports that were outstanding at the time of reporting, which the department was still dealing with uh, together with uh, the beneficiary, uh, the Kefa Semenya Foundation. That is uh, the reason why the payment was not processed by the end of the financial year. I, I hope, uh, CFO, you can talk to the reasons why a uh, National Treasury didn't approve. However, uh, for us, it was, didn't approve the Nyanga Art Center, uh, um, trans, um, the movement to, of this money to Nyanga Art Center. However, Honorable Chair, I need to indicate that this Nyanga Art Center um, um, project was also to do with is part of our community arts development program in terms of making sure that the facility itself um, is uh, in a position to be able to host the programs that are, are being done for the artists in that particular community. We have uh, provided for it uh, in this financial year. We've met with the Nyanga Art Centre Board uh, together with the province, and we believe that the program will be rolled out this financial year. Thank you, Chairperson. I am hoping that, oh, the research, uh, Chair, sorry. Um, if I can just re uh, respond to the question from the Honorable Member on what research uh, is being done by SACO uh, in this current financial year. For instance, um, in the last quarter uh, that finished at the end of, of, of June, um, amongst other uh, uh, reports uh, that uh, depict the research that was done by SACO was covering the area of uh, understanding the talent uh, of the untapped. Uh, in other words, SACO was doing a skills audit of creative South African youth focusing on young people, given the fact that uh, that's the area that um, the country is currently faced with. The other research that they did in the last quarter in this financial year was the baseline review of the white paper on arts and culture, and also the South Africa's animation industry ecosystem analysis. And they also did the economic mapping of the cultural industries in South Africa 2022. In this new quarter that has just started, um, I mean, that is in the middle, the, the second quarter of this financial year, amongst other reports that they are working on, which are underway, they are doing the methodology to develop subnational satellite accounts for provinces, districts, and metros, which came about as a part of the resolution within MINMEC, led by our minister. They are also looking at a, a, a research on the realization of the South African gaming industry 
through the linkages with the animation and design sectors, looking at future requirements and implications. Um, this is just amongst others, uh, Chairperson. There is uh, four others that uh, they are that are currently underway. But maybe to save on time, Chairperson, let me stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, did you, you are back. Thank you. Thank you. I I, I did not uh, uh, show my face before uh, 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 chairperson. I'm here. Um, let me just. Musa, <laughs> no, 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 chairperson. No, it's only that the DG caught me off guard. And when you get into the battlefield, there are certain things that you forget to do. Um, oh, okay. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me then start by uh, talking to what Honorable uh, Zondi uh, asked about the trees and trial data bells and uh, TRC audio tapes. The plan uh, is uh, for 2022, 2023, uh, Honorable Zondi is 240, broken down into 150 <laughs> prison trials and 90 TRC audio tapes. That's the, the plan for, for, for this year. And then on geographical names, in terms of the number, uh, that we were able to uh, transform and standardize is uh, 27. And that happened out of four gazettes. But uh, I would not be fair to the committee if I, I were to say how many names uh, are we planning to uh, standardize uh, or transform uh, this financial year because that is not incumbent upon the department. The department receives names from local communities and provinces. Um, and then what we do, we ensure that uh, there was a sufficient consultation and everything was done uh, before the minister then considers those names to either approve or reject. So uh, we, we, we cannot um, pre-plan the number of names that uh, will be uh, uh, transformed and, and standardized. Then coming to uh, exhibition content, um, which uh, the question that was asked by the uh, chairperson, um, I think chairperson, it's very important that one maybe explains this so that uh, there is a, a context. There are three exhibitions that uh, are in the making or were in the making during this period, a uh, reporting period. One was the Sarah Bachman, I mean, one was the uh, um, uh, Winema Tixela Mandela, which is the brand fault. Uh, that one was concluded uh, in, 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 in March. Uh, so it was concluded within the, the reporting period. The other ones, it's Sarah Bachman and O.R. Tam. Those, in terms of our plans, was that we were going to start that process of concept development, and of course, from concept, concept development to looking at the content development out of the concept until you get to a point where you have got a fully fledged exhibition. But we're very uh, uh, clear also that Sarah Parma, in particular, it's not going to be easy to quickly do the exhibition. Yes, you can start the process of content development and uh, exhibition, but knowing very well that since it has been delayed, it might take a while before it is installed. And hence, in our plan, the installation was even looking at 24, 25 financial year. So I think that uh, the problem there was more about the articulation of the target. Uh, that's where I think we could have done much more better at uh, Chairperson. But I do note uh, the, the, the point that the Chairperson has, uh, has raised. Now, with regards to community libraries, we do uh, work with the uh, provincial departments um, and we assist them 
in the interpretation of the uh, conditional grant framework, which has its, its own uh, requirements. And we start working with the provinces right from the beginning when they do business plans, because we ensure that the provinces themselves develop these business plans because they know the needs of, of provinces. And um, we then approve those business plans. And what we do, we normally have workshops right from the beginning until the approval of business plans, but we don't leave things there, uh, Honorable Chairperson. What we do, we have quarterly monitoring and evaluation uh, meetings that are happening per quarter where we are able to see even provinces that are lagging behind in terms of the, the, the work that they were supposed to do um, based on the business plan. And this even empowers us, uh, uh, Chairperson, to even report uh, those provinces to the uh, DG, those that are lagging behind, where even the DG uh, rights to specific provinces and indicate exactly what is uh, outstanding, what are the things that they are not doing according to the plan and all those kinds of things. We have not gone to a, 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 a point where we withdraw money from provinces that are underspending and give them to other provinces. We have not gone to that point, but uh, we, not, we stri strictly monitor uh, provinces. I'm saying this, uh, Chairperson, because the conditional grant framework, it does make provision for that. Uh, but uh, we try not to be punitive because we know that uh, once they have identified uh, areas that need uh, libraries, we, we would rather support them rather than uh, be punitive. And um, of course, the, the, the conditional grant uh, intervenes in specific areas. It's infrastructure development, it's a refurbishment of uh, existing infrastructure, is the installation of uh, ICT, it's the purchasing of uh, uh, library material. And uh, what we have observed, uh, Chairperson and honorable members, is that problems uh, are within infrastructure development, which seems to be a problem not just for libraries, but uh, as uh, members might have seen, and they would also be uh, taken through the, 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 the other infrastructure projects that have to do with uh, our legacy. The, I, I couldn't hear the, the question from uh, Honorable uh, uh, F F Van Dijk. Uh, I just heard the word library, and I mean, uh, um, uh, bursaries, but I, I could not really just uh, make the whole uh, question um, so that one can uh, uh, respond to it. So that's how far I can go, uh, 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 and, and questions that were related to program four. Thank you, teacher. <coughs> Uh, yes, uh, TDG and uh, Sumaya. Um, thank you, thank you yeah, very much. Welcome. Thank you very much, uh, TG, and good afternoon, Chairperson. Good afternoon, Minister, and good afternoon, uh, honourable members and colleagues. Um, TDG, there's a whole lot of questions around infrastructure. I'm going to ask Mr. Lebokang Mokwera to respond to them. I will respond to the other questions that have been asked by the honorable members. I may not go in order that they were asked, but more especially where there's overlaps uh, or similar questions, I will try and respond to it in that manner, uh, uh, Chairperson. Chairperson, with regards to the targets and some of the uh, performance indicators, um, there was a question around the overachievement of targets, uh, and especially around the school sport targets in terms of district championships, etc. Madam Chair, uh, we must recall that school sport was suspended for most of last year, and even in 2020, but focusing on last year. They were suspended for most of the quarters. So we had a very congested program in the fourth quarter. 
such that many of the district championships that uh, and, and 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 programs in school sport that couldn't take place in previous quarters is now congested in this quarter so as a result that then led to the uh, overachievement of those targets also how are the targets set the targets are set by the provinces based on the budget the number of schools that are registered on the school sports program and and hence um, and that will give us then the targets for each province. Uh, noting well, Madam Chair, that there is a responsibility that is shared between the Department of Basic Education and the Department of um, Sport in the provinces as well, that our focus is mainly on the district championships, the provincial championships and the national championships. With regard to the, um, the targets around the academies program where there's overachievement, uh, our program, our target of 80 athletes is based on the MTSF, the medium term strategic framework. So that is a five year target over the MTSF we set the target, but provinces also have their own plans and they set their targets which happened after the MTSF. And as a result, the provinces targets are based on what is their requirements and in the last year because of the fact that many of the athletes could not get to the fitness centers or they could not get uh, their support as they would in the high performance centers they would go to the provincial academies and hence we had quite an uh, overachievement in that area and then um, madam chair the issue of the 11 federations which are those 11 federations that did not meet their transformation target. Now, Madam Chair, the report that we're talking about is a is we are reporting after a year. So in 2021, we will report on the 2020 report. Now in 2020, sport was completely at a standstill based on the levels, the risk adjustment levels. And we only opened in, I mean, sport was now as, operational to an extent from level two. So as a result, all of the activities in all of the codes of sport that are part of the transformation process, the EPG process, most of them, because of COVID, had activities that were canceled that did not take place. Now, if you look at the EPG report, the, all the codes are measured in terms of their self-set targets of the barometer, and hence, some of those things did not happen. If you look at national and international participation, it did not happen. A lot of the school's activities did not happen. So as a result, 11 of them did not meet their targets. And those 11 are athletics, baseball, bowls, boxing, cricket, gymnastics, hockey, yuxke, and then rowing, um, swimming, table tennis, and volleyball. So the only codes of sport that achieved their targets were the four, which was netball, it was rugby, it was softball, and it was um, tennis. So I've given you the 11 and I've also given the four that achieved the codes um, that achieved their targets, uh, Madam Chair. Um, and then, uh, Madam Chair, um, with regards to the... Um, Sorry. Um, uh, the, um, okay, with regard to the uh, uh, minister accompanying the athletes to the Commonwealth Games, um, did the minister accompany? Yes, the minister did accompany uh, the athletes to the Commonwealth Games. Madam Chair, it must be noted that the Commonwealth Games comes once in four years. And at the Commonwealth Games, every code of sport has their major governance meetings. And also, the, every, at every Olympic Games and at every Commonwealth Games, there's a Commonwealth Minister's meeting. So the minister attends the Commonwealth Minister's meeting, which is compulsory. And being in Birmingham, Birmingham at the time, the minister also attended uh, events where our athletes were participating and as well as participating in other forums to actually promote South Africa, not only as a sporting destination and promoting our, 
our ability to host major events, but also promoting South Africa as a business destination. So that provides, the Commonwealth Games provides a platform for more than just sporting events. But be that as it may, the minister was there for a while the, for, uh, at the events. And when he got back, then the deputy minister was also at the Commonwealth Games for part of the events as well. And her program was also similarly uh, to promote South Africa, to actually host our athletes as well. Being Women's Month, the deputy minister also hosted our athletes, the female athletes, in a discussion session around women and sports activities. Um, with regard to the number of people, uh, the low target for the school sports, as raised by uh, uh, the Honorable Fandai, uh, that 75,000 is a very uh, low target for school sports. Madam Chair, I think we must be mindful of the fact that we do not have a budget to support every school in the country. Secondly, Madam Chair, schools registered to be part of the school sport program. And those are the schools that receive the support in terms of capacity building, in terms of equipment, attire, et cetera. And they're part of the school sports program. And also, um, in terms of the number of schools that are from rural areas, many of the schools are from rural areas. We would just need to get the details in terms of our database. Uh, but many of the schools are from rural, as rural areas because our focus is on quintile one and two schools, especially in terms of equipment and attire. Uh, in terms of the, uh, the issues around love life and the challenges, Madam Chair, I don't think there are major challenges around love life. They are very strategic partner to the department in terms of job creation, in terms of the young people, the youth development, and in terms of active and healthy lifestyles as well. So we do, they do deliver programs in conjunction with ourselves in terms of the youth camps, in terms of the school sport programs, in terms of our I Choose to be Active camp campaign. Um, in terms of the budget report around their, um, their, their funding, um, Madam Chair, there is money that they have not spent in the last financial year, and this was mainly because of activities that they could not do uh, in, um, due to COVID, but they have requested for deviation to use the funding for other projects because in this financial year, they had a reduction in budget, and we are looking at that deviation. There is funding also that they have that they're still going to use in terms of our national youth camps programs, in terms of a trailblazer movement. So they are they, they, the funding issues, we are working with them to address those issues where there's been under expenditure, expenditure in the last financial year. In terms of the provinces and the business planning process, Madam Chair, just to indicate in terms of the conditional grant, we have a framework and in the framework, we do have timelines. And in terms of the business planning process, um, we have a process where we meet with the provinces on a quarterly basis to get their reports on a quarterly basis. There is a timeline also in terms of the business planning where we provide them with templates that are sent to us by National Treasury. They complete the templates, they send it to us. We have an assessment of those templates of their business plans. And then we set up one-on-one -on -one sessions with the provinces to look at their business plans. The business plans this year were slightly late, Madam Chair, because of the fact that we had a slight increase in budget. So we had to send the business plans back to the provinces for them to then include this change in, in, in budget into their business plannings. So as a result, it did come a bit late and that then delayed the transfers to the provinces as well. In terms of monitoring, yes, we do have a quarterly, we have quarterly reports with them. On a, on, a, um, on a quarterly basis, they send us their reports, they send us their, they send us their uh, proof of uh, their portfolio of evidence. We have a team that looks and verifies all their portfolio of evidence. Madam Chair, we also have timelines that are in the, uh, in the grant framework. And if provinces don't meet the timelines, we have a pen penalty schedules where, with, where we would hold grant from them until such time they correct all of that. Um, at the last meeting we with the provinces, the DG had also indicated uh, some of the challenges with them. So on an, there's that meeting of DGs of DG with the HODs, where we also um, discuss all of their performance 
and, and look at how then remedial action can be taken uh, in cases where they are underperforming. We also then resolved in the last meeting that the MNE forum that we had previously will be resuscitated, that will map up map out how the MNE will be done on site as well. Uh, further to that, Madam Chair, our internal audit does go to the provinces and they, they, they actually audit um, the financials of the, the provinces as well. And, and then with regards to, um, uh, what else is the, the normal without the infrastructure? I think I've covered a lot of the uh, non-financials and um, all the issues relating to the projects in provinces and uh, the sports development aspects. Ms. Mkhwera is here and DGG and Dima is also here and they will then respond to some of the questions related to the, uh, the infrastructure. I think with regard to the one area that um, was raised about the Robben Island Museum, in terms of the distressed projects. I think um, with regard to the capital budget, we reprioritize the capital, capital budget towards the operations of 16 million in 2021. Um, and Robin Island then identified those projects which will, will, will be part of that, uh, uh, um, that will constitute the work that will be done with that reprioritized budget as well. So, Madam Chair, if I can just hand over to my colleagues and they would respond to the other questions around the infrastructure. Thanks, Madam Chair. It would be Mr. Mukhwere and Madam Chair. Lebukhan. Unmute, Lebukhan. You are muted. Oh, no. No, thank you very much, uh, DG. And, um, Good, at, good afternoon to Chairperson and Honourable Members. Uh, good afternoon to, to the Minister, uh, the Executive House of the Department. Uh, I, would, I would take the questions, uh, Chair, I think from the point uh, where the question was posed by, if I'm not mistaken, Honorable uh, Dennis, following the request by my DDG to join the meeting. If there are any other questions that I may have missed, maybe from speakers that came before uh, Honorable uh, Dennis, I would be guided accordingly and see how do I best assist. Just to add on the question, uh, the response uh, given by DDG Khan regarding the distressed uh, organizations and in this instance, uh, Robben Island Museum. Additional to what she has indicated, uh, Chair, also in 2022, the money uh, which was reprioritized from the heritage asset, and that is in February, about 20 million of that to go to Robben Island um, to fund their operations. But even before that, as far back as 2020 in September, about 35 million from their own budget as well was then reprioritized from the capital budget fund their uh, operations. That's part of the work that the department was somehow able to give the institution a relief uh, as far as the situation was concerned. Then with regard to the matter of uh, Sarah Parkman, I think if I'm not mistaken, the question from Honorable Dennis in that regard was whether we've got a budget allocated in the current financial year. Indeed, we do have a budget allocated for Sarah Parkman in the current financial year. But I think it's only fair that the judge should indicate that due to the challenges that we still have in Sarah Parkman, uh, challenges in particular in relation to us concluding all the matters that we're supposed to conclude with the Department of Public Works, we have the suspicion that we might not be able to spend the entire budget looking at what has to by the time the project comes. So, and since we are now busy with the environment processes, uh, we will be tempering with that specific amount and uh, via it to some other projects, one such project that should benefit because it is underway in terms of uh, implementation and contractually it does not necessarily have those fundamental changes. It's a project of NUN in, in KZN, uh, which is currently uh, funded uh, about 25 million 
but because we are almost done with the design stage and we'll be starting very soon with uh, with a uh, procurement of material majority of which will be still very much expensive so that's why we'll then uh, likely add an additional uh, 15 million if all is approved to that specific that money is of course taken from Sarah Parkman. With regard to JL Duggan, I think the question was posed by Honorable Adams. Um, uh, the, the project as is, uh, its uh, contract has also been, been terminated. And uh, But before that, uh, we made an attempt uh, as a department to try and establish what are the challenges, particularly from the side of the contract. When he was appointed, uh, um, there was a time, and after re-establishing a site, there was a time when the site was invaded, particularly by local communities, demanding jobs, as well as the local uh, business forum uh, uh, within the area, also demanding those subcontracting uh, opportunities. For a significant amount of time, was lost trying to resolve those sort of issues, and at the time, the uh, contract subcontractors were appointed uh, not because of uh, they were chosen through a fair process by the main contractor, but because of somehow they were imposed and they were given work. The unfortunate part was that the quality of work that they produced was not consistent with the specifications and, and all the requirements. And unfortunately, regardless of all that, uh, the main contractor would still be expected to pay for that work and come back again and do the remedial works on those works. And part of the things he really complained about as his frustration was that he seemed to be the only one who's absorbing that whole risk and, and there is no appetite on the side of the implementing agent to share that specific risk. That is why, notwithstanding the fact that uh, all the money that were to him were paid in after that, after he was paid, he still continued to terminate the the contract then was saying if he comes back he should come back under the different uh, conditions of contract that would share the risk fairly between him and the consultant or between him and the implementing agent but uh, issues such as uh, those site invasions uh, uh, contributed to a delay but also the July uh, protest uh, because had work had to be stopped but also there was the issues of uh, labor protest uh, around October 20 the one that somehow affected the reliable supply of the required material for those works that were undertaking that were taking place rather there. So those are some of the things that said somehow contributed also to the delay as well as that aspect which has contributed to the cancellation. And we have been submitted uh, with a final account and we are attending to those matters. We have somehow catered also for additional allocation to JL Dube be able to conclude this uh, uh, process and it's part of the environment process that we are still busy with now. With regard to the target of the 60, 50 municipalities that we're supposed to provide, just to indicate honorable members that uh, it is not uh, within a financial, it is not just the ones of a uh, support. When we say, for example, 50 municipalities, we, we support municipalities throughout all the stages of uh, project implementation. And you would find that in a quarter, uh, a project is visited at least once. And within a financial year, each active project is visited at least four times uh, throughout the, the entire year. So for as long as there is an active project that we are funding as the department, that responsibility we then continue to execute until the logical conclusion of the, of the of the, of the group. We will, of course, uh, continue to support those other projects that are new and those that are still uh, that are still active uh, uh, from the previous and from the current financial year. And then in terms of the, uh, I think it was the, the Honorable Zondi who also spoke uh, on the issue of the Sarah Bartman, but uh, from an angle of the actual contractual challenges uh, that were there, uh, which ultimately also led to the termination of the contract, uh, which was last year in June. Even today, as I've already indicated, the project is not yet again off the ground. But the main thing that that, that contributed to the contractual challenges with Sarah Bartman, uh, amongst others, as also mentioned by the contractor, 
And you would remember that the contracting part there was also Department of Public Works on behalf of DSEC. Was that the, the, the last contractor was the second contractor on the project after the, the contract was uh, seeded by the first contractor. And the new contractor, when he was working, he then discovered some defective work that needed some remedial works uh, so that everything uh, meets all the required quality standards. And upon submitting a claim for the remedial works, the uh, uh, Department of Public Works refused to say, but we have already paid these works under the, the previous contractor. We have also paid the, the retention and so on. We took this project foot spot as is, and, and when we, we investigated some of the things, and really we found that indeed uh, uh, there was some remedial work done, and unfortunately the money had been paid. So it's one other aspect that the contractor was not happy about. The aspect of the extension of time where there would be delays, even if delays would be as a result of certain things from the side of the public works, for example, uh, there would also be a delay in terms of approval of an extension of time. And the problem of that was that as a contractor, when you don't have approved extension of time, you don't even know the plan or the revised completion date you are waiting against. And uh, that would make things difficult for them, including the approval of the variation orders. Uh, there were also an aspect of, of the delays in terms of the payments from public works to, um, to the contract. And the last other issue that they also raised as a frustration was that because of these disagreements that they had, uh, they approached the mediator to deal with their issues to mediate on some of these disputes and all that. Now, what they raised as a frustration was that even with that process, DPWI seems to be not cooperating because all the information that is supposed to submit to the mediator, there were significant delays around it. And all these things happened until it got to a point where the contractor decided to terminate the contract and disestablish the site. And that is why the situation is basically where uh, it is now. Um, I, I think I may have covered all the questions that were raised as far as infrastructure. Content. But as I've indicated earlier, if there's anything that I've missed, I would be advised accordingly. Thank you very much, Chair Yes, CFO. The last uh, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, I'll start with the issue of uh, uh, Inaga as development, which was declined by the National Treasury. And the reason for declining it was saying that uh, it was late because the submission was done in February. And they say it is a physical time behind the reason to decline the, the, the submission. And then uh, uh, there was an issue that of the 16 million uh, from the chair uh, that is material. Yes, we have agreed to say that all the major uh, expenditure that we future it must happen at least the first six months of the financial year, so that at least we are able to have a control in place, so that if we can see that the time is not going to. Uh, to be met, then we can able to come up with the intervention when still the financial year is not yet added. And we also additional to that, uh, to, to now start to, have to review our procurement plan so that we review all the procurement that needed to be done in the financial year, because also the procurement of uh, things also affect the time frame. because if you have to have procure something in, let's say, in May, then you don't propagate in May, then it also results on the negative expenditure because then it was not going to be realized. Uh, those are the two questions. There was an a, a issue under program two. I think the DDG can't answer it, uh, but the financial impact of the transfer is under the uh, I'll end the chair. Thanks. Thank you, Chair. Thank Honorable Chairperson, from my side, I think uh, we, are, we are covered. Colleagues have answered extensively and exhaustively. Um, uh, I will not add anything much at this stage, unless there is a question that uh, mem honorable members believe is outstanding. But I believe colleagues have answered extensively on all the questions. Thanks. Thank you, TG. I won't even allow the follow-up questions because of the time we still have 
uh, work to do as uh, members of the committee. Can I give this uh, opportunity to the honorable minister? Thank you so much, so long, uh, honorable members. Uh, we have done uh, your work, let alone that the, the department uh, is planned uh, with this uh, presentation and today ready to answer all the questions. It, it was not just a, a meeting, it was very extensive information sharing uh, to us as these members. <clears throat> Honorable the Minister. Well, thank you, Chair, and thanks to Honorable Members. Um, the points have been covered, but let me say, Chair, that the, the uh, major problem of infrastructure, what we see as a resolution for it, something which affects all the departments, because DPWI is the custodian of infrastructure. But we feel that uh, we can do more if we can be allowed a space. Uh, so we seem to be getting along with uh, uh, my uh, uh, colleague, Minister, who understand our frustration on that. On understanding, Chair, uh, I think uh, it has been explained. You know, when the figure is just uh, bend it around, you don't know what happened. But there's been explanation. Uh, but I must say that over and above that, I did say to, to the pitch that uh, we should rather have uh, to deal with the issue of understanding as the plans uh, they have and so on, uh, and also understanding that everything now is open and there are no restrictions. Uh, but to that extent, I have uh, made a directive here that we we need to look at the job creation for the youth in particular, rather than having uh, underspending. On EPG, um, the, the, the federations here play a key role, Chair, because uh, uh, these self-set targets uh, are very important. And when you have a situation where people can't even meet it, then it becomes a big problem. Why? Planning to get closer to them uh, now that uh, uh, everything has been opened uh, will, will definitely, because for us, transformation is key and uh, we'll always put this uh, on the agenda. The other area, Chair, which uh, worries me about understanding is what um, seems to be a trend now where, where practitioners are financially supported, they get the first chance uh, to get the rest. They then have to give reports. But the first chance in most cases is the bigger portion uh, of the allocation. And sometimes they don't even bother to come back and claim the second portion. And in that way, uh, matters are not closed properly and uh, they going to be understanding. <laughs> The, the last but one matter, Chair, relates to Silapa, that uh, this very understanding we're talking about is that uh, we thought that we need to be proactive, especially from the side of practitioners, uh, on financial management training, and this is what Silapa is dealing with. The last point, Chair, is uh, what uh, affects the administration uh, in the main, uh, the ministry that the major focus for us is the cultural diplomacy, is the cultural diplomacy program. And this program uh, has suffered, Chair, uh, because uh, people were no longer, you know, uh, venturing out there and so on. And for us, it's good, particularly the destination of South African cultural goods out there uh, in, the, in the world and exposing our own uh, creatives and so on. So this is one program we've taken, Chair, and we want to really go big on it because it empowers uh, our practitioners. And one of the things we are looking at is the reopening of some of the cultural attaches in some embassies around the, the, the world. Thank you very much, Chair. 
Thank you very much, uh, Minister, uh, with you, with your team. Uh, we do get, uh, we are... No wonder who's that. We're, we're appreciating, Minister, your emphasis. Okay, you, 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 we, we do appreciate your emphasis on this understanding, and we do note that even uh, the department at large, they, they say something about understanding the explanation and the measures that we are going to take. Uh, uh, we do appreciate that, and uh, all what you now we are just uh, your closing remarks on the proactivity proactive in financial uh, and in, in administration and the cre creation of youth employment. Uh, let me take this opportunity to say that I've forgotten to say uh, you strike a woman, you strike a, a, a rock. This is our month. And let alone that in every year during this month, the sketch of violence is, is, is more glaring and horrible things are happening. Uh, I cannot repeat what you have been uh, seeing uh, since uh, adding on, on, on usually uh, gender-based violence. But let me take this opportunity to say that we can release you, Minister, and your encourage. Uh, we were about to finalize one point of in the agenda of our program. Thank you so much. <coughs> you are released, DG. All of you, JP. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Yeah. 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 and one of the members and the minister. Have a good day. Thanks. Same to you, honourable members. Uh, let's let's deal with the program. I've heard that uh, Jabo and Zo, do you still have the, the problem of your the network or gadget? You did tell me that you are having a problem. Uh, Chair, we we able to connect for everything else. It's just that our emails are not working, so we can't send emails while we're in the meeting. Um, but we're able to project the program and also the minutes for the main of the committee meeting chair. Yes, let's start with the what what is what we talk, our agenda say the the third program uh, of of our committee. Can you flight it and for us? Is what is this now? This is the third term program, Chair. Uh, are you, why is it like this? Mm -mm. Uh, is there not a program that's later, Chair? Uh -uh. Okay, let me just try again. <laughs> Yeah, there it is. Honorable member, uh, as the management, uh, we did sit and propose, uh, and through our proposal, uh, we have a lot of work as this committee, as we have seen that uh, even tomorrow we ask a lot uh, to to have meetings, and coming weeks we have uh, meetings or, uh, on Fridays. So there are uh, members which they do have a right of uh, forwarding to the um, the secretariat proposals, but uh, honourable members who have prioritised this program which we are putting in front of you. We've done with it today's uh, meeting, and then tomorrow 
which is the 24th of August, we are having a briefing in Boxing South Africa and the um, annual report as we are seeing it. And then on the 30th of August, uh, it is going to be Tuesday. Uh, you've seen the, the 24th uh, report back by SAFA on the outcomes of the elective conference. It's, it's tomorrow. And then Tuesday, Tuesday 30th, we are proposing briefing by Department of Sport, Arts and Culture and the Pan South African Language Board on the preparation of the inclusion of South African Sign Language uh, budgetary requirements and timelines joined uh, with it. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Can I can, can I flag the pro, the correct one check because we do have a meeting on Friday, the second of yeah. August. I put can I just flag the other one chair? I, I was going to ask because we did uh, agree yeah. that we have a meeting on Friday, so now the thirtieth uh, is before the Friday. Please uh, put the correct one. Person. Oh, oh, hello, hello, okay. oh, Honorable Adams, Honorable Mushongo. Thank you, Chair. Chair, can they please, if they reflect the program, we can't see the heading of the program no, they, because I check next to the virtual, no. where the virtual is writing, this virtual thing, meeting, thing, there's a still, column. They are still going to put it. Uh, please give them the chance. They, they've put the wrong program, which we have amended uh, when we were getting issues. Uh, please wait, Honorable Adams. Honorable Mshongo. <laughs> Chair, I, I'm concerned. You are saying management team, the composition of management team, where, they, where is it on the rule that the management team must have a program for us? We must just send input later. And then they don't even consider that because we've sent, my colleagues have sent input and what we have here, they didn't consider that. Now, who's the management team? Which role are they functioning from? And then we'll take it from there because all our suggestions, even previous term, we've raised issues <coughs> that happened with uh, us going where, uh, site visit, us entertaining. You know, one of the things that I've seen we have repeating uh, entities or organization coming to us, but we have a organization which never came to us and we're going for a year now for the last term, for us to end the term. And I believe, Guti, I want to find out who is the management team, the composition of it, what, how do they prioritize, what mechanism do they use or a, a, a structure that they use to say this is a priority, mine is not a priority. Thank you very much. Uh, Chabu, you must put on the uh, the program. Honorable Mushongo, this is asking this question for the second time of the management uh, uh, team information. We did uh, respond, and what? And uh, I'm suspecting that even yourself in the office, you know how management team, according to the rules of parliament, is is formed. So. Uh, Let's firstly put the program and we'll answer Honorable Mshongo in order that when they are looking at the, the exact program, they can uh, engage with the, the, the committee at large. Firstly, in order that if they are rejecting what we are proposing, uh, they are going to say so. That's why we need to first put the program and then we'll want comments as you are doing on the <laughs> uh, Go up to uh, 24th. Uh, 
Ja. Uh, who is this Friday job? What, what is your problem job? <coughs> Authority, there's, there's, there's a slight problem. So, so Lega is trying to project. I don't know why he keeps kicking it out, Jeff. Okay, let me try this. So let... Chair? Yes, Honorable Maloman. I got a proposal that because all of us, we've been emailed this program, and when I'm going through, I can see that this Friday, the 2nd of September, which is okay. 9 to 1, briefing by National Arts Council on the allegation. I don't know whether members can they open on their uh, gadget so that maybe we can continue because I can also see that we're having a challenge with our our emails from parliament. So there's a challenge of the network. Yes, yes that's my proposal. Is it projecting yeah. out there? Uh, uh, can you go up? The challenge uh, was reported by the parliament uh, even to us as members, members supposed to know that. Um, uh, can you see the yes, honorable members. Yes, it's reflected. Yes, can 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 we uh, go to the thirtieth uh, August briefing by the department in Pen South African language? and the uh, Department of Justice and Correctional Service in the Department of Basic Education. Uh, and then go to Friday, the 2nd September. Briefing by National Arts Council on the allegations of governance challenges and recent series of resignation of council members state. Uh, it's Friday second. Go up the six. Uh, uh, just a little bit. Uh, did I finish? Or oh, let's go to the this the um, or oh, in the same day the redness of disperse the third round of the presidential employment simul program funding for the arts and culture sector on that day. And then on the 6th September, briefing by South African Figure Skating Association on their annual report and any other pertinent matters. A 9th of September, briefing by Mr. Mkhongo on the petition to investigate the commissioning by the Minister on Sports, Arts and Culture on a flag at an estimated cost of 22 million. Briefing by Auditor General on the expenditure of the Monument Flag Project uh, against planned targets on that same day. And then 13 September, briefing by Isiko Museum uh, on the annual performance and plan and interventions on grievances raised by employees employees with input from DESEC and EC co-management, consideration of uh, adoption of minutes. Friday, 16 September, briefing by Department of Sport, Arts and Culture on the Monumental Flag Project. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about uh, this because uh, on that day, supposed department to be with us, uh, I'm not sure whether it's not now a, du a duplication. Chairperson Dennis Joseph, may I ask a question here? That, uh, that yes, on the yes. 16th, I thought I heard it on the 9th of September, the same, um, if you go back to the 9th, on the same project? Yes. That 22 million flag, isn't that the same? It is that's what now. I'm saying. That's what I'm saying now. Can, can I explain, Chair? Yes. 
please. Okay, Chair. This is the ATC that we came out last week, Chair, on the petition. Yes. So on the 9th of September, Mr. Mflongo will, will be requested to present the petition to the Portfolio Committee. And then yes. the AG will also present on, on that issue. And then the mm -hmm. department is also then will be requested to come on the Friday, 16 September, to brief the committee on that project. So it's that it's that uh, investigation that the committee will be doing, Chair. So we're going to call the, 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 the sponsor of the petition, which mm -hmm. is Mr. Mshogo. We call the AG and then we'll call the department chair. So that's why we will have yeah. Yeah. numerous meetings. On the uh, thank you, Chairperson. May I ask a follow-up question on that? On that? Yeah. Yes, I, thought, yes. um, I thought now Mr. Mshogo is from the petitions committee. Don't we have a petitions committee in parliament that deal with petitions? I'm just a bit concerned that we deal with it up front or at what stage we should we deal with this point, not to can, uh, interfere can, with can, other committees' work. I'm just asking for clarity. Can 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 I respond and uh, who, who the administrators are going to uh, add on? I did get an, an email from the office of a house chairperson of, of the speaker that we must deal with this petition as a committee. Uh, is per instruction. Can you add a uh, jabu? Yes, Chair, there is a petition committee, but this one was referred specifically to, to the portfolio committee to do the investigation. Chair. Hence, that's why we are dealing with the denial committee. Chairperson. Uh, Honorable Dennis, sorry, can, can, uh, I, don't want, I, I, say, sorry, I don't want a, a, a subject to be on there. And then when the meeting starts, then we as a committee debate with one another. So that's why I rather debate now and get clarity. So when yeah, right. somebody, yeah I just hope you understand what I'm saying. I need to know what the work of a petition is in this in our committee. We just have clarity on that. But thank you. I just wanted to raise that. Thank you. No, but you were right. Uh, according uh, to some of understanding when the petition is, is, is put in the office of the speaker. Uh, the, the petition committee, uh, which subcommittee, which is sitting, but it was so strange that uh, it was referred to us as I'm saying that uh, we have that. And uh, I didn't consult with the, the house chairperson and the speaker. Uh, I was thinking that immediately that is ATC, uh, it does have time frames, and we don't want uh, to have something as if we don't want to hear this. So that's why uh, we are putting here in the committee, and uh, all what we're putting here is it's subject to discussion, and that's our understanding. Uh, anything uh, in order that we must pass on? Anyone who wanted to, to say something about this petition? Okay, let's go to... Uh, yes, Honorable Mshongo. My understanding, if Chabu says I'm going to table the petition, it's just tabling, there's no discussion. And then on the, nine, on the 16, the department uh, will respond. That is my understanding. No, we should... Uh, Unless, unless I don't understand it well, because a, a, a petition when it's a, a sanction or assigned to a, com a to a portfolio committee, the portfolio committee deals with that. Even the department must be there. Now, why aren't we moving the 16th of uh, September to the same date on the 9th? Or it's either we move the petition things to on the 16th, vice versa. Support, Support, Support them. Because yeah. that so is a procedure that is no, done. No, I'm, I'm still chairing the meeting. No one must just. Uh, apology, speak. chair. My apology, chairperson. Oh, I did. Yeah. Okay, Honorable Mshongo, um, Jabu, um, that's what Honorable Mshongo is saying. What I was asking, whether why can't that it department must be part? Oh, Honorable Denise. I got in the in the discussion whilst I was asking that why can't all the the, the stakeholders uh, involved with this thing 
can't be in the one meeting. Uh, so uh, I've asked that Honorable Shongo and Honorable Dennis, when Honorable Dennis was asking whether it's supposed to be with us, and the explanation is that uh, it's forwarded to us. But Jabu, uh, I didn't uh, consult the, the office as how chairperson and the, the, the office of the speaker. Uh, can you tell us the reason that you separated uh, this? Because uh, I wanted that it must be on the same day. And especially now that Mr. Mkhlong is saying that when he tables, it's not supposed to be discussed. Maybe it's because the, the relevant stakeholder, which is our department, is not going to be there. And maybe there's no use that you must debate. We can't table and not to debate or to hear. And then uh, the AG giving uh, their side of story and the, the department. Okay, Chair. No, thank you, Chair. I've already moved then the meeting. So we'll have the full day that uh, Friday the 9th to deal with the whole with the whole matter, Chair. I've thank you, Honor. Thank, thank you, you honorable members. Can we go to Tuesday, September 18th? Uh, uh, a briefing by the EC Home Museum on the annual performance plan and interventions of grievances raised by the employees with input from DISAC and ISICO management, consideration of a minutes. Go up. A 20th September, briefing by the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture on the implementation of the MIG with input from the National Treasure and SALCA. Uh, consideration of uh, adoption of minutes. A uh, 27th Tuesday, briefing by Department of Sports Arts and Culture on the operational funding shortfall for museums, long term plan, and in depth briefing on the prioritization of 21 million in 2022 23 funding to address this matter consideration of adoption of committee report on the flag project investigation. Uh, I'm not sure now. Uh, you mean that after that day, we must consider the, the, the consideration you know, of, of committee report or you now because we will be on that day discuss and come to a conclusion, okay? Consideration and adoption of minutes. And then honorable members, uh, that's uh, 27 September. Uh, and then uh, it's going to be consequency period. Honorable members, <clears throat> let me come uh, to put uh, uh, to you that, uh, the problem of programming, where all our leaders are sitting, it makes us to be look like as if we don't want to take an oversight. Uh, we have prepared, we wanted to go to Northern Cape uh, when we were uh, at the stage that now uh, we must confirm uh, the, the programming change the parliamentary program. And when we were thinking that there were proposal to go to visit this Sarah Batman, when we were virtual of uh, now uh, coming back to the honorable members, again, uh, the programming said no, uh, no constituency period uh, that we must take. So I, I, I am putting this to you, honorable members, that first and foremost, can you adopt this uh, proposed program and can we engage uh, as you are seeing that 
uh, it's it's also a pet one because of issues of this, uh, especially when you are looking at arts and culture. There are so many things, and we try to prioritize that they must not be stayed. Uh, I'm putting to you, honorable members, uh, I've seen the head of Honorable Shongo. <laughs> uh, thanks, Chair. Chair, you said you my questions, and then nonetheless, because you gave me a platform, I'll repeat the same question. Uh, another issue that I want to raise uh, when you talk about oversight, I think that it's either whoever that is taking decision on our behalf somewhere there, they're undermining our portfolio committee, because other portfolios, they go off on oversight. This week, human settlement is outside. As an example, even last week, other portfolio committees, they go out for oversight. But for us, they're saying, no, I don't understand. I think we must put pressure or we must do it, because sometimes the government listens when you protest. Now, Chair, another, another question that I have on the schedule, our schedule that we are going to approve, SAFA is coming tomorrow, but we don't have a presentation. And they have a tendency of undermining us, giving us the stale news. It will be long presentation that it doesn't have an impact. What we know, they usually do that. They will give us 120 page, 11 hour, and they expect us to engage with the vision that they have, that it's stale, that is not implemented. Why don't you have a, a presentation if that coming tomorrow? And Another issue, the oversight that we've proposed, I think it's a matter of agency that this committee must consider the national orchestra. It's a burning issue. The board member is part of the new so-called national orchestra where the department has set aside money and we have three orchestras, but there's this member of the NAC who's benefiting, is now a CEO of that national uh, uh, the orchestra. I think we have to discuss this. They must come and explain to us before September because it's happening. Money's been used to date. Now, I think I'm proposing that we consider that as the the, the must come a national orchestra. The name of the guy is Tembe, and he's a member of the NEC, NAC, but member in the, 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 the things that I'm proposing that they must come and present us, tell us even the minister, why is there a national orchestra, but you have different orchestras, and why that money must be set aside? That is another proposal. The National Heritage Council, I think we have to call the National Heritage Council. It is hectic that, obviously, we can see that we have a uh, purpose on, on the proposed uh, program. I'm happy, but we must call the National Heritage Council to come and present to us with issues. Thank you very much, Chair. Honorable members, I'm putting to you the proposals. Honorable members, Honorable Sondi, Honorable Zuma Lomani, Honorable Dennis. Thank you. Yeah, Bonga Salo. I own Romani Ukulumagon Kesano. In particular, we have oversight with the department which is going to expenditure. We have been at home for two years. It's, it's, it's the third year now. 2020, 2021, this is 2023, 2022. So, we have oversight. I see spend. It was because of the COVID. Now COVID, I COVID is no longer the result of the government or the COVID parliament. Now, if it's a self fully we start. Why is there a chaos now? You go on and protest for no one. Why is that boom? Is that the one that gets the unjumanity? But for more pressure, no one has been this ago. People go on and have been this as well. But an angry excuse. Which why finalizing I spend the Mali, a beggar would see spend the more beside. No good, I guess what I said as long as that is clearly still who fair, but no fair, the Sutra. It's our right to finalize Susipum so when the more beside. Get Pacha, Chebegel, or Logutti, he went. I won't have a song as that is still twenty five more corner last last cook. Mahabek finalized cooking, not this one. 
Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Member, except that even during COVID, this committee were the first committee to take it oversight, if you still remember. Yes. COVID, uh, we did yes, take yes, oversight. Yes. Uh, Honorable Adams. <laughs> Thank you, Honorable. Chairperson. Chairperson, we are on the program. Yes. And uh, my proposal will be that we adopt the program with all the necessary changes that we made on the program. I so move for the adoption. Uh, except that, um, oh, Honorable Dennis, uh, I'll come back. Honorable Dennis. Yeah, so thank you, Chairperson, for the opportunity. I just want to, to, to go further on the point Member Slongo raised about SAFA. Um, because it means that tomorrow morning, if it stays on the program, we will have to make a decision how we're going to deal with them according to our own committee mm -hmm. standards when 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 entities come to appeal. Yeah. So it, we can also yeah. make the decision now to take them off and let them yeah. know and give them another date instead of debating it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm mm -hmm. just saying, making I'm just uh, I'm just giving yes. the on that. Thank you, Chairperson. Honourable members. I will ask uh, the office to tell us uh, why are we not having the presentation of SAFA. But um, I'm suspecting honorable members who are in the same pain and vein of oversight. Uh, uh, I'm suspecting that all these members of this committee, they want to do e oversight. Uh, uh, if you don't mind, uh, in the go to second uh, September. Yeah, the 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 briefing by National Arts Council on the allegation of government challenges in recent series of resignation of council member state. Can we put their national orchestra? We did discuss this, um, uh, I'll repeat it in the management, but we're thinking that hey, uh, maybe this we need to detail because this NAC is not a child's play because we'll call them within the department. But because uh, even this one, uh, the, 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 uh, we can include if members, they don't have any problem. But let me let me just uh, tell the members that uh, 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 myself, uh, I was feeling this pinch uh, cause when I was trying to do a follow up of other committees who are taking oversight. Uh, I was told that uh, those committees who were identified to do a oversight on disaster uh, issues. And as I'm sitting here, I'm like you, honorable members, that uh, what are we going to do about our funds? Uh, we have funds, we are not taking e oversight. And it's not just oversight that we want to rejoice. We have so many challenges that we want to be all on the, on the, on the road. So what 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 must I do, honorable members? Maybe I and as you are here now, uh, will would love that our our staff through the office of the chairperson must convey to the house chairperson the concern of this committee uh, through this discussion that we have outstanding uh, oversights that through their programming, they've been cutting the oversight. And, and, and now the members, uh, they, are, they do feel that uh, we do have budget about that. I'm suspecting all of us, we do support that honorable members. Uh, I've spoken to individual members of this committee uh, I did speak to Honorable Adams, Honorable Mlongo, uh, Honorable, 
is it honorable Marling also or honorable Dennis? But I did uh, I did feel the pinch as all of us were feeling. So any second of the program of which now is in front of us, there is a proposal from Honorable uh, Adams. We're still having minutes, Honorable Members. If you look at the time, uh, we cannot uh, stay here since nine o'clock until three to two. We will guide you. What must I do? <clears throat> There's somebody who's calling chair. Yes. Honor, oh, I'm very sorry. I have shut down the, the, the let me give it to you, uh, Honorable Malumana and Honorable Mishongo. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> let me move for the adoption because already you've already added the orchestra issue that the Honorable Mishongo was complaining about. I move for the adoption so that we can continue. Thank you, Chair. I think the orchestra will need the date. Remember, there was a proposed date, young age 16. My suggestion we move that date, the orchestra to 16, because we cannot include two uh, uh, issues there, and those issues are they'll take time because it's an intervention between us and the complainant. Now, my proposal let's have the, the orchestra on the 16, because we've removed the department on the 16. The, the first proposal, which is it's my suggestion. Now on the issue of your heritage council, I see Guti and Ifagi, which is I believe Guti Nayoga can if it's not here, can very prioritize it in our next term when it comes. Yeah. Another yeah. issue, another issue that which I want to raise chair, I think you was presenting us and I think Obabunya Teller tend to play with us and sometimes he raises pertaining important issues. I think it's high time that you respond as the chair because he's now saying all the committee, we don't care and everything. I responded the first time that we'll put the issue on the table. I think you saw different emails. My suggestion, chair, is either you respond uh, quietly outside or because, or you respond as a scopula because he, he tends to copy all of us. Now, my, that is my suggestion, chair. Would, can we maybe respond to Babu Nyatel? Thank you very much. Honorable members, can you support the can you support the shifting of as I was saying that I'm seeing is seemingly is packed. Can you support the 16th honorable members? The issue of honorable Nyatela is with the speaker. So once uh, somebody has taken the issue to the speaker. Uh, it's 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 not I'm 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 not able to do that. Uh, as I'm speaking, the the Mr. Nyatella wrote to the speaker, uh, and initially I did write, to, I did respond to Mr. Nyatella, but he, he did come back uh, every now and then. So the, his issue now is with the speaker's office. Uh, uh, honorable Long. can can honorable members uh, amend the adoption that is 16 must be opened for what uh, honorable Longo is proposing any uh, second chance for the adoption yes thank you so much honorable yeah. members honorable members uh, i'm suspecting this committee is doing well, honorable members. You must you, you must not forget that when we are dealing with the sport and dealing with the arts, uh, we have so much uh, things. And today it, it showed us that uh, when they, these, some of them, they're given these trenches, they don't account and they will be writing and complaining and as if one, they don't have uh, to look at the compliance. And that's why uh, we must uh, try uh, to, to focus and uh, to call them. But if it comes to a push, let's try uh, to, to push anything that will make us 
to be happy that uh, we've done the oversight. Uh, can honorable members uh, that you must go to, to the minutes or what are you proposing? <laughs> Yes, let me finish the and finish the minutes. Yeah. Not the yeah. Yeah. Let's yes. finish it, Jay. Because we have been given these minutes. Let's go uh, on a remember. Uh, please table the, the minutes uh, of the 27th May and 1st June. Let's start with the 27th of May. Hello, on a, yes, on a, on a, can we, I suggest we do those minutes tomorrow because we did not receive the SAFA presentation and in other words, SAFA is not coming tomorrow. That's my suggestion. But they, they are straightforward, Honorable Nkongo, we've been having these minutes. Uh, Honorable members, this this is a proposal from Honorable Nkongo. Honorable uh, Honorable, yes, who's that? Chairperson, Comrade Adams. Yes, honorable member. Uh, I, I wanted to, to, to propose that we finish that two uh, uh, minutes. Uh, it's really long overdue. So why can't we do it now? Uh, uh, Jabu, do we have the presentation of uh, USAF? Can you report to us? Uh, Chair, as of this morning, we didn't have the presentation, uh, but it's just that now we won't be able to check our emails because our, the system is down. Uh, so I don't know what has transpired between 9.30 this morning and now in terms of the presentation, but we will call the department because we've been following up with them. Uh, I can We can speak, because Sumaya, was, we did indicate to, to the DDG as well about the, 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 um, the delay in us receiving the presentation, Chair. Let's, 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 uh, I'll assist, uh, do that, and I'll do follow up, uh, but which means tomorrow uh, we won't have a uh, sulfur with us. Uh, can you go to the 27th minutes of May? Uh, are they projecting, sir? No, not yet. Okay. <laughs> Honorable members, uh, we've got the minutes and we'll read the minutes. Go up. Any corrections, any adoption of the minutes? Go up. Honorable members, these are your minutes. Can anyone adopt the minutes? Yes, sure. Honorable Zondi is proposing for adoption of the minutes. Thank you, Honorable Zondi. Any second? Thank you, Honorable Chair. Honorable Malumane, it's second. Thank you, Honorable members. The minutes are seconded a true reflection. And then the minutes of the 7th of June. Are they visible, sir? 
not yet. Okay. Yes. <coughs> Sorry, honorable <coughs> members. <coughs> These are your minutes of the 7th of June. Uh, uh. Yes. Thank you, uh, honorable members. I'm presenting the minutes of 7 June. Any intake? Chairperson? Yes, honorable Jen. Um, I don't know what happened. I lost the minutes on the screen, but I want to comment on um, just the <clears throat> 3.2 presentation by the 2023 Netboard World Cup Board. Uh, that second paragraph, uh, they say heading achievements against project plan. Yes, they are still now. Now that sentence, it uh, I just need I just need assistance. It's the second line says in September the Netball World Cup 2023 um, office was office was opened. Um, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. no, no, I'd probably refer to the to the World Cup itself and not to a date when the office was open. So no, okay. Yes. I understand that now. Thank you, Chairperson. Okay. Yes, it is. Yes. Thank you. yes. Mm. Did you see? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just take that out there. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, can I ask uh, with corrections? Uh, adoption of these minutes. Um, Chairperson, I have another point, uh, page eight, um, and for deliberations. Yes. Um, there, there, there's a point, it's not up one, two, three, four, five, seven, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The twelfth point, um, there's a repeat. The committee was interested to know how many African teams have qualified for the World Cup. Um, there's, I see it there. Um, now that that and then further down one two three four but seven eight points further the same there's a repeat again it says the committee asked how many African teams have qualified for the World Cup yeah that is I see that's coming up it seems to me a duplication a repeat of the same question same paragraph. Yeah. Same corrected, corrected, uh, honorable. So that's all for the minutes. Thank you, yes. okay. Thank you, honorable Dennis. Honorable members, you never miss up with honorable Dennis. That's a read. <clears throat> 
colleagues, honorable members, these are your minutes. Any adoption of them? Somebody to propose? Chairperson, Honorable Adams. Yes, Honorable Adams. With all the corrections and additions, I move for the adoption of the seventh um, minutes, seventh May minutes. Thank you. It's seven June, uh, Honorable Zonde. Yes, it's seconding, sir. Thank you so much for your patience and your indulgence, Honorable Members. Uh, it was a long meeting, but as I've said, that we have more on stake in this uh, committee. Uh, so, uh, correctly so, we don't want to sit in these meetings and not to go on the ground to see what you always taking decision upon the meeting is urgent. Thank you so, so much, honorable members. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, colleagues. Thank, thank you, Chairperson. Thank, thank you. See you tomorrow. I, I wish that I would be better than this. Thank you. Yes, Chair. Take your warm water with lime and ginger. Still have a meeting at 16 to, to 18 hours until midnight. <laughs> That's a shame. There yeah, are all these meetings. Which one? Mm. Uh, the meeting is adjourned by honorable members. Thank you, Bye, Chair. Thank you.